upstairs. <laughs> oh, here, I've got an extra one. Good morning and, and welcome to your boardroom. This is the final meeting of the Board of Supervisors for 2005. It is December 13th and welcome again to your boardroom. We're going to start this morning with our call to order roll call. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Supervisor Bennett. Here. Supervisor Parks. Here. Supervisor Michaels. Here. Supervisor Flynn. Here. And Supervisor Long. Here. Thank you. And I'd like to invite up and, and appreciate and welcome Harriet Weigel from our Disabilities Ministries, who's going to offer us a moment of reflection and affirmation, as she always does in so wonderfully spoken words. I love you, and it's so good to be here. Thank you for inviting me back. Every time I come here, I spend most of the night up praying, sitting in front of a word processor waiting for some kind of a thought or feeling or message to share with you. And I've been doing this for several years and it didn't work last night. I couldn't do it. So I finally gave up and I went to bed and guess who I dreamt about? I dreamt about my friends here. I dreamt about all of you and I thought about what each one of you means in my life. Normally I come in with printed sheets. I've got a couple of scribbled notes that I wrote down on a pad that I keep by my bed. Linda, you are so sensitive. I just am so impressed with you. What you did with the Senior Summit meeting was incredible. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for calling attention to a population that needs to be seen. I thank you for my flu shot, for a wonderful day, for lots of learning, and for everything that you did. John Flynn, I see you everywhere. Every meeting that I go to, regardless of where it's at, I see you there. You may not be there through the whole meeting, but you'll be there through the part that really counts. You're not afraid to pick up a sword and swing it. You're, you're the kind of an angel that I want by my back if I've got to go into battle because you have a boldness about you. John, I see you as a barrier reef, someone that will keep the waves of turmoil away from the rest of the family, someone that will gently guide without force but keep the people around you safe. Kathy, I see you as my sister and I love you with a love that is incredibly deep for everything that you do and have done. You helped me see the people with mental health, health issues, the disabled, the homeless. You've given me a vision and helped guide my feet and I love you dearly, dearly. Steve Bennett, everything that you've done with and for the youth in this county makes a difference. What you've done with the foster homes makes a difference. We've got to reach out to the young people in our county if we're going to be a successful place to live. The only way that we can counter the, the problem with the gangs is to make sure that we touch the children when they're young, give them affirmation, give them a sense of value and belonging, and help the people that are taking care of them. Now Judy, you're the tough nut in the group. And you've given me something that, that I really needed. You don't just jump into something. You analyze, you examine, and you make sure that what you're saying is right. You really have blessed me in so many ways. And Roberta is my guardian angel. It seems like every time that, that I'm reaching a bottoming out place in life, Roberta calls and I'm invited to come in and meet with my precious friends. And I just thank you all. You know, it's not about one. It's not about one of you. It's not about me. It's not about one citizen. It's about all of us. And you're the family that keeps me on the path. Fifty years ago, I had a miracle take place in my life. Billy, would you come up here? I had a very difficult pregnancy. I had a lot of things happening, and finally a child was born. 
And this child was very frail. This child came close to dying, and the, the doctors told me, you can never stand up under the pressure that this child will give you. He's mentally retarded. He's got many, many problems. Put him in an institution and do it now. He was one year old when they told me that. And I said, not on your life. And they said, you need to. I said, no. I have absolutely no intention of doing that. And for three years I watched as this child struggled and finally walked and finally talked and now stands beside me, a member of the ministry. He's out there feeding the homeless. He takes care of me. He gives me all of the answers that I need because he brings me back to the basics every time. And this is what I would like to say to you today. Go back to the basics. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And that's what Billy always tells me. Right, Bill? That's his favorite. What does it say, Bill? Trust in the Lord. Okay. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. <laughs> um, where are you at here? Yeah, trust in the Lord at all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And that's what I see with Judy. And that's what I'd like to see with all of you because I know it's there. It's, it's not just what we see. It's not just what we understand. You know, take it to God. Okay. Uh, regardless of what faith or denomination you are, lean there. It's a place to rest. It's like that, that brick wall that's outside of the ocean. It's a place to rest, contemplate, and come up with the right answers and the solutions. You're precious, precious people. For the next few weeks, you're going to be on a break. Enjoy it. Spend time out there in the sunshine, but don't forget to walk in the streets of the city that you live in and, and talk to the people because they need you. We all need you. My prayer is that God bless you, that God keep you safe, that God gives you happiness like your heart has never known, that you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. I love you. Shalom. Peace be with you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that gift. Christine, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And we thank you, Harriet and Billy. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful gift. We thank you. Thank you. You too. Okay, we've got the minutes. Move approval. Second. There's a motion and a second. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mr. Barrier Reef, CEO. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the agenda review. Thank you, Madam Chair, <laughs> members of the board. Um, the agenda review is in two parts, uh, one which we will repeat again this evening because, as you know, you're taking a special meeting out to the city of Camarillo this evening. Uh, starting with item 11 on your, this morning's agenda, there is a revised board letter. <coughs> on item 25, there is also a revised board letter uh, which deletes recommendation number two and modifies recommendation number three by deleting track number 4409-5. Uh, item 42 has been removed from the agenda. Item 44 has a revised board letter. Item 45 has a revised board letter. And item 48 has been removed from the agenda. And that is this morning's agenda. Now the special meeting agenda, I'll read these off uh, in case someone in the audience is also you know, planning to uh, attend that meeting. Item number 10 has a revised board letter. Item 12 should have read uh, recommendation of Supervisor Parks, not Supervisor Long. And item 13 has been removed from the agenda. I'll read those again this evening when we get to Camarillo. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, minor correction on um, item 32. 
The presentation is to Officer Brian Ward, not Wood. Ward? Ward. Okay. Correct. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. While we're, um, Mr. Johnson um, rightfully pointed out that we sent a letter uh, about uh, uh, item 48, uh, Children's Health Initiative Options Analysis, um, and uh, the um, the report was not ready uh, to be distributed uh, last Thursday, uh, so it will come out uh, towards the middle, second half of January. Um, but I do want to uh, take this opportunity while we're pulling the reason we had this on here is to make sure that um, the CEO knew uh, he has a representative at the table, uh, at the uh, CHI table, and we also have a representative from HCA and HSA. Um, we just want to make sure that the CEO knows that we'll be expecting um, a um, fairly quick um, uh, report back and his analysis of these options because we will have to move pretty quickly uh, after this comes out. And so since there are people at the table, we just wanted to alert them that over these next uh, four weeks or so while we're um, that, that at least the, be, the beginning processes will need to probably take place because when that report comes out, we will then turn around and ask you for an analysis of those options and your analysis also of uh, what do you think are the current revenues that we can um, uh, sustainably uh, allocate, if any, uh, towards this option. So I just want to make sure that that was clear and, and stated at the same time that we pulled this uh, agenda item. Okay. So I'll move the recommended changes. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to be able to pull item 28 and 29 for discussion. Okay, under the consent? Okay. Yes. Okay, a motion on the uh, agenda review as noted. And there was a motion and a second? Correct. Any objection to that? Hearing none, so ordered. So then under the consent agenda items 10 through 20, 31, we request to pull 28 and 29 for discussion. Any other request on the consent agenda? Okay. Hearing none, then shall we discuss uh, 20, 28? Thank you. Uh, item 28 regards a, a, a contract award for the trail and trail rail project, rail trail. And my comment is that uh, we only ended up with one bid, and it was well over what we had anticipated. And the question I have is, is this uh, a, an award of funds that we'll lose if we don't move right away? Because my inclination would be to go out to bid again. Uh, the first bid came in 52 percent higher. We went back and looked at our engineering re you know, estimates again and said, well, it's only 21 percent higher. Um, but to me, if we can get more than one bid, we might get some competition. It might have just been the timing of it. And so I'm just asking if we do, if these funds aren't going to go away anytime soon, if we can go out and rebid it. And I don't Staff see anyone here. prepared to address that, or shall we trail it and have, have Mr. Britt uh, come up, Mr. Coons? Yes, I, I don't have the answer to the question, so if you could trail it. Okay, uh, thank you. We'll if we could trail it. Um, item t 29, mm -hmm. um, I have some real specific questions. It's a, uh, the Pole Creek Debris Basin. So if you want us to wait maybe in, uh, or if you can answer the questions. I, I could trail that one also. Okay. Please. Okay. We'll, we'll trail those until which time staff is prepared to come and answer some questions. Um, I know uh, specifically the Pole Creek one is critical that we move on it because of the um, – uh, obviously the concerns in the community with the pending winter storms. Um, I don't know the critical timeliness of the other one. But okay, and, and it's, this one is just some questions I don't see in the report. I would like to have the information on and say that I'm opposed to it. Okay. Um, so we'll trail 28 and 29, and, and if you could have staff be prepared to come in and, and address those. Uh, the other consent items, any other questions on them? Shall we act on the consent then? Move like excluding 28 and 29. Move approval is amended. Second. Motion and second is amended. Hearing no objection. Okay. So ordered. 
All right. Um, at this time, we have an opportunity for public comment. To anyone in the public wishing to speak to the board, I would ask that you submit cards, and we have some already submitted. We'll move ahead um, and welcome you to speak to the board. And the first one up will be Christy Madden. It's that time of year. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, it is a distinct pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I am president of the Ventura County Management Council, and I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to our award winners. We, uh, several of you were at the Management Council's holiday party on Thursday evening. So I'm going to invite our winners to come down front, and I'll say a few quick words if I can. Um, the winner of the Innovation Award is Cindy Cole. She's our Director of Nursing at VCMC. Uh, she knows that we are, in fact, in the midst of the most severe nursing shortage in the state's history. Unlike the private hospitals, the county cannot offer expensive sign-on bonuses and high salaries to lure and retain their staff. She still achieved one of the county's highest rates of successful recruitments with the lowest turnover rates, lowest use of costly outside con uh, registry nurses. She's crafted a visionary, exciting nursing leadership team, one that has made VCMC a magnet for nursing retention and recruitment, while many other hospitals flounder in the depths of a nursing shortage crisis. Cindy? Congratulations. Our Integrity Award this year goes to Jackie Cohen. She is the manager of the county's self-insurance program. She's responsible for handling millions of dollars of claims against the county every year. She's willing to stand up to pressure from judges eager to clear their court calendars, and she consistently makes the hard call of when to go to trial. And even though some cases are controversial and every case you risk losing, she has managed to save the county millions and millions of dollars. Uh, due to her blend of competence and integrity, she resists the temptation to just throw money at <laughs> claims to get rid of them. And that's Jackie. Our mentoring award goes to Diana Casey, another nurse. Uh, she is manager of the Community Health Division of Public Health. She has hired and mentored many public health nurses Establishing active partnerships with community groups, including foster care, juvenile justice, behavioral health, and probation that serve the same clientele. Her nurses have working relationships with judges, probation officers, social workers, and counselors, expanding their experience and their effectiveness. Besides mentoring, she even helps to create new mentors. She helped develop a new program at CSUCI, and due to its, its success, it will soon be expanding to include the VCMC nurses as well. So, congratulations. And she is also one of our new members of our Management Council Board of Directors, I might add. Mm -hmm. Our Superior Customer Service Award goes to George Compton. He's our Veteran Services Officer behind us. George responsible for providing services to the 65,000 veterans who live in the county. He and his team have developed an aggressive outreach program, and with 40% of our veterans over the age of 65, he's recently established partnerships with senior centers throughout the county. George himself has served our country for a 27-year career in the U.S. Army after successfully commanding soldiers in Alaska, Vietnam, Germany, Korea, and Panama. George retired with the rank of colonel. He is clearly a man who cares about and is committed to the men and women he serves, deeply touching the lives of many unsung heroes who have served our country. So thank you to George. Um, this year, our most thankless job category was uh, split into two subcategories. We have one called the most thankless job visible category and the invisible category. Our invisible thankless, most thankless job award went to Jim Penny, uh, Jim has the sort of job that people only notice when something goes wrong. Since this happens so rarely thanks to Jim, he is largely unnoticed. He oversees the 240 county-owned and leased facilities and is responsible for their daily preventative and long-term maintenance. With 7 million square feet of stuff to take care of, a small <laughs> staff, and a small budget, this is a Herculean task. The sewer lines get blo uh, blockages get cleared, the roofs get repaired, and the sinks get fixed. Structural problems are addressed, and the list goes on and on. No one knows who it is that does this unglamorous and oftentimes disgusting work, although you'd never know it by looking at him today. <laughs> Jim Penny and his team are among the most overlooked and underappreciated folks in the county family. 
Now, on the other side of that coin, we have our most thankless job in the visible category, and that was awarded to Lynn Krieger of our Harbor Department. Lynn is responsible for the Channel Islands Harbor, a highly valuable, extremely controversial, and acutely political county asset. Despite attacks by those who disagree with her, Lynn has maintained a positive outlook and unwavering commitment to doing what is best for the harbor as an asset for all county residents that can be proud of. Her calm and professional demeanor at board hearings, despite vocal and on occasion vicious attacks, is a credit to her and her commitment to public service. Many a county employee has awoken in the morning, smiled, and thought, well, at least I'm not Lynn Creek. <laughs> So these are our awards, and then Johnny Johnston uh, each year gives out what's called a Good Government Award, and uh, Johnny awarded that award to Lynn as well. If you want to make a comment, Johnny. Well, only that uh, it is difficult to uh, serve public policy when public policy is controversial, and frequently it is the messenger that uh, takes the heat, and I think Lynn Krieger has done a remarkably good job of maintaining dignity and persistence in carrying out policy, even though that policy is questioned occasionally and is controversial. And I appreciate the work that she does. So I'm very pleased with the success of this year's awards program. We had over 32 nominations that were received this year. The program is growing by leaps and bounds. And as you all know, because I've said it many times, celebrating that which is good in government and how we serve the public is really paramount to what we do in the Management Council. Absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. It was a joy to be there that evening and see the celebration. And we appreciate our managers, your top notch. We thank you. And Madam Chair, I'd just like to thank Christy Madden. I think it's just great reinforcement for all of us and appreciate your efforts putting that together. And I just wanted to comment, these people were up against some very stiff competition. So it says yes. a lot, but it also says a lot about our other employees. Absolutely. Thank you, Christy. Thank you all. I have another speaker card, Steve. Um, Steve Bunger. I Good like morning. your Christmas tree. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's our beacon of hope. <laughs> exactly. Uh, good morning, Supervisors. Good morning. Uh, CAO, County Council. Uh, this will be fairly brief, and it's uh, kind of ironic that this is right uh, following the most thankless job uh, award, I guess it was. Um, just a couple quick comments. I'd like to thank the board and the CAO for their continued support of the management of the harbor. Of, through a majority of the board, we've been able to get an awful lot of things done. Uh, this is a thankless job that uh, <coughs> harbor management has, and uh, I just ask the, the board to stay the course uh, and allow the, uh, the manager, the director of the harbor, the CAO, the CEO of the harbor, to continue to... Uh, to um, to make progress with regards to the continued improvement at the harbor. There's uh, an awful lot that doesn't, <clears throat> an awful lot that's behind the scenes as far as work that goes on until something comes out into the public. And uh, I don't want the board to be sidetracked or derailed by ridiculous, unfounded uh, accusations. And I'd, uh, those tend to only throw in major roadblocks and, uh, and hinder us from ever achieving that improvement that we've been able to attain. There's items on your agenda today, as there are almost every week, and I'd ask you to support the management that you've put into place. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for your comments and your investment. Thank you. That's the last of the public comment request cards. If I may, the comment about the tree yes. is that on the site where their building once stood and has now been scraped off in preparation for a new building, um, and for the enjoyment of the public and all of the other lessees in the harbor, um, the Bengers erected a huge Christmas tree of strings of lights, and it's just gorgeous. And you're right. It just means hope and future for the harbor. Thank you. That was a nice gesture. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's the end of the public comment. Shall we go back? Are you prepared on 2829, Mr. Coons? Yes. So on okay. item number 28, I've checked with uh, Ms. Nolan, and uh, the funding is at risk of being lost if we don't proceed. 
the cost estimate that we had is about 20 percent lower than what the bids are that we received. The original cost estimates that were put together were not accurate and they were amended. And uh, we think with the bidding climate and the analysis that we've performed, that this would be appropriate to proceed with this award. That, that, that answers my question regarding, you know, if we're going to lose the funds, I don't want to lose the funds. I want to move forward with the trail. But I um, would have liked more competition, obviously. So if there's a um, question. Let me ask yes. a question. Where, where do the funds come from? The state funding? They're And so the bid really is 21 percent higher. That's correct. Right. It started out higher. And it's getting tough out there with these projects, this escalating yes. cost. It, yeah. The, yeah. And yeah. I would imagine when the bids also were open October 27th, you know, it's probably pretty hard as anything is to do anything once the November, December starts rolling around. Yeah. But I, I'll go ahead and move the item. Second. Yeah, and a quick comment, just from a, a I guess, civilian point of view, I have been trying for weeks and weeks and weeks to get some work done you know, at my home. And everybody is busy. And the cost of construction materials, I've had people come back and rebid re projects because the construction materials are going up faster than people can get the work done. So, you know, it's probably both things, Linda, the holidays and the fact that people are just busy. It's hard to find anybody to do anything. And the major contractors I know are busy with you know, a lot of them, I think, are in New Orleans. <laughs> well, it's also nice to have the opportunity to say, let's go back out again. There's no time constraint. And yeah. I, the fire department's done that a couple of times, and I really appreciate that ability. But I'll go ahead and move the item then, if I haven't already. And I was a second on it. <laughs> Any objection to the item? Hearing none, so ordered, and thank you. With appreciate it. So it's a very good project, very supported by the community. And our next item, 29. Mr. Pratt's going to give us answer questions. Supervisor yes. Parks. I, ha I have several, unfortunately. Um, the one that really cuts to the meat to me is um, the total project cost is listed as 2.7 million mm -hmm. for the temporary Pole Creek debris basin. The amount of money that we get from the NRCS is 1.5 million. Correct me if I'm wrong. And in addition to that, there is an agreement that any excess costs beyond the 1.5 million will be shared uh, by a certain proportion between Griffin and the county a watershed protection district. Is that all right? That's all correct. Okay. The amount of money that the watershed protection district and Griffin are contributing Three point or three hundred and thirty thousand and six hundred and sixty thousand. That comes out to about uh, one nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So if you take the nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars and the one point five million, you you come out with not enough money for your project cost, which is two point seven. The, you come out with a deficit of about $220,000. With the NRCS agreement, we're responsible for construction engineering. That's the extra 200000 that you see listed there. So in round numbers, that agreement was with Griffin was for round numbers a million. They would split two-thirds, one-third, up to a million. So you add the million, the million point okay. five, and the two hundred for construction, you get the 2.7 round numbers. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Also, I'm wondering... Um, have we decided on a location for the permanent basin? The permanent basin, if Griffin builds it, will envelope this basin. Okay, so it's basically the same location, maybe bigger or stronger? Correct, <laughs> bigger. What happens, um, what happens in the event that um, Griffin doesn't build the larger basin. Uh, is that uh, the assumption then that they will not build their project either? We're not going to be taking care of the uh, new developments runoff? That's correct. Who pays for the mitigation of the of Griffin's project, of the larger basin? They'll take care of the mitigation? Okay. Correct. Okay. 
All right, I think that answers my questions. Um, oh, and, uh, here's another one. Who owns? Who will own the temporary basin? In the event that there's a permanent basin built, the temporary basin will go away. In the event that the temporary basin becomes permanent, there's a clause in the agreement that allows us to purchase it from Griffin later. That number, $636,000, is not included in the 2.7. That's pointed out in the in the board letter um, because it's not a, 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 a expenditure we're requesting your authorization for yet. But we did want to bring it to your attention. That should Griffin walk on their project, this basin will become permanent and we will have to pay them for the property. So if uh, Griffin's project doesn't go in, we'll come back, you'll come back to the board and ask for more funding to pay for the property that the basin is on. That's correct. Um, so the temporary basin, <clears throat> if there is a, uh, a problem with it, uh, who would be liable? For example, you build it and something fails, it would be our liability? As it is now, yes. Yeah, as it is now. If something happens there now, uh, we own that property and it's our liability now, uh, arguably. And arguably in the case of the temporary basin, it be for the courts to decide. But usually if something goes wrong with one of our facilities, we get sued by everyone. And um, one last question then. Um, sometimes... Probably more often than not, there are cost overruns on projects, and we've established how much we will pay at most and how much they will, Griffin will pay at most. And then let's say the project comes in above the 2.71 estimated. That's another one that the county is going to pay the cost of. Is that right? At that point, we would, we would bring Griffin back to the table and say, uh, what would you want to do? They were only willing to go to a million. Um, and I might, I should probably point out, this is kind of a hybrid deal that gets us to a one-to-one -one benefit cost ratio. Some of the supervisors have had experience with this. If you calculate the benefits of this project just based on damages alone, not based on any risk to life or, or um, inconveniences associated with flooding downtown or the mobile home park, you, you do it on a depth calculation based on how deep it gets in the, the structures. That's about 1.5 million. What we've done here is created this hybrid situation where for very little money the district can create a facility, very little of the district's money, the district can create a facility that serves the interests of the city and the surrounding community, the existing community. Um, so we would come back to your board and and uh, and point out that we have about 500, round numbers, 550,000 in this project and ask if you're willing to go forward with any more, and we would also ask Griffin to step up. Um, and the reason they're stepping up right now is because they feel like the fill material, and this is a great deal for us, we can dump it right over the side onto their property, which ought to keep the construction costs down. That's why they're willing to split the costs with us. Uh, I read that Griffin has been conditioned by the city of Fillmore to construct uh, the permanent debris basin, but they're as well as, it, uh, so they're not, they don't have any requirement from the city to pay for the temporary one. They okay, do not. So they're just stepping up. That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you. That answers my questions. Thank Supervisor you. Flynn's right. question. I, I have some concerns, but I, I don't want to set you up for some kind of management award. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Please do. I don't think there's any danger of that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Jeff, let me ask you this question. If this uh, temporary basin should go on for a very much, uh, for a long time, let's say, who's responsible to maintain it? We are. We maintain it until it becomes either part of Griffin's Basin or we make it our permanent basin. The time limit we've set in the agreement is 15 years. Okay. Um, I, I know for sure that uh, a project is needed there on, on Pole Creek. I mean, I've driven through the mobile home park and Pole Creek Channel is way above it and so forth. So I'm sold on that. But I'm not sold on the project. I'm not sold on what has been done to generate this project. When you move the floodway line, as was done, that, that's a line I don't think you touch. And you, you and I have talked about this before. And... Uh, uh, you know, the way it was done, it was done pretty quietly with FEMA. And uh, we had a hearing on this in Fillmore, and yet it's on the consent agenda here, which I wonder why it's on the consent agenda. It seems to me something like this ought to be on the regular agenda. The other point, um, 
I want to make is that, you know, for flood zone two, even though arguments can be made for building projects upstream for Oxnard, Oxnard, Oxnard generates the most money for flood zone two. Uh, am I correct? I don't know the answer to that question. Well, if you'd look it up, I, I, I think will. I'm right, but it would be a good number to, to have here. Uh, because I do represent the people of Oxnard, and I think they're paying the big share of the, the way here. But the project should not be built. The project, the Griffin project, should not be built. We should take a strong stand against it, uh, especially after all the problems we had in the United States with Katrina and so forth. Levees, everybody says, well, this would be the best levee ever built. Uh, there's no such thing. So, but I am in favor of a project, but I'm going to have to vote no because it's so tied to the uh, to the housing project there on the Santa Clara River. Would you like an answer to the consent agenda question, or pardon me? Yeah, you asked why it was on the consent agenda and not the regular agenda. Yeah. Um, it, uh, this is a completely independent project from the Griffin project. The, uh, it can stand alone, and that was the way it was um, it evolved. Mm -hmm. We were thinking about shelving the project, but Griffin stepped up and said, because we're benefiting from the fill, we're willing to pay for that fill. Um, and so it, it has the taste of Griffin, but it is not the Griffin project. This is uh, an emergency protection project for the existing properties, so okay. hence the consent agenda item. Well, that part of it I support, but the other tie-in I don't. Any other questions? Supervisor too, too quickly. Bottom line is if there was no Griffin project, would you still like to have this debris basin there if you could at the Pole Creek to try to protect the citizens of Fillmore? Yes, sir, absolutely. Um, and it would be a lot, uh, yes. And it would be a lot more expensive. If it, either that or smaller. Uh, okay. We'd have a choice to make. Okay. All right. Second uh, question. Um, you've, been, you've been going pretty darn hard with all of the getting ready for the erosion control in the city of Ventura, you now sound like you are fighting a bad head cold. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so are you holding up all right? I'm just fine. Thank you. You can be here for the next couple of days. All right. Great. Thank you. Looking forward to that management award. Other questions? <laughs> <laughs> are there other questions? I moved you right to the top of the list. <laughs> You didn't have that cold yesterday afternoon, did okay, you? Okay, action by the board. <laughs> second. Motion is second to move the recommended action. An objection to that motion? One objection. It passes, and I thank you. Thank you. Um, Contrary to what Supervisor Ben is saying, uh, we should not get always get tied up with some big project, and if we don't build that, we, we won't get this. That's just not good planning. Well, if I might comment, since it's in my district, this is a project that has been a long time coming. This is a project that is critical to the city of Fillmore and to the El Dorado Mobile Home Park, and we were going to do this project one way or the other. Absolutely have to do something. After this past winter's storms and what we saw in the evacuation of that mobile home park twice, there's no question this project's been a long time coming, and I appreciate the good work. Thank you. May I just make one comment? I do support the project. If it were disconnected from Griffith, I would support it in a, you know, very rapidly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At least. Okay, now we'll move to board comments. And Supervisor Michaels. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, first comment, real quickly. The uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I had the honor um, to ride in the lead boat um, for the parade of lights last Saturday night, and it was absolutely incredible. And the the uh, captain of the boat was a woman, and she did an awesome job. Uh, big boat, forty two feet, forty. 48, 48 foot, um, and <clears throat> pardon me, Carol was there, and everybody was just so fun to be with, and the crowd was incredible. I couldn't believe how many people were out there. We had such a good time, and my thanks to the to the Harbor Department for the invite, and to Carol for taking care of my husband and I all evening, and uh, I just 
can't tell you how much fun that was and to see from the water side all of the boats that aren't in the parade but they're still very very decorated for Christmas you know extra generators on board and they've got the the blow up Christmas decorations on the stern and on the bow and anywhere else they can stick them uh, was just really fun to see and all of the apartments that face and homes that face um, decorate on the back as well as the front so that from the water side everybody gets to enjoy the light of the holiday and there was a tremendous amount of camaraderie amongst all of the boaters and the and the what I call harbor family out there so um, <clears throat> pardon me I just wanted to say thank you and hope that that can happen again and Carol if you would um, pass on my again my thank yous to everyone who helped put that together and and helped make it a really uh, fun evening and the the incredible creativity of the boats that actually entered the parade uh, the designs were incredible and the the theme was thanks for the memories and one of the boats um, did genie the old TV uh -huh. and they had belly dancers out you know dancing to, to the theme uh -huh. and it was not that warm but I guess they were moving around enough that they could do that but it just great great fun and and for the board if you haven't done the parade of lights you know next year be sure to do it because it's I'd great like to, yeah. great great fun and really pretty um, and with that I would ask that the board adjourn in memory of the persons um, on this list from the community of the Sami Valley they will all be missed and one Harvey Gandell uh, passed away yesterday and he was one of the original early brokers in um, the city of Sami Valley real estate and always always put back into the community was tremendously active on a lot of projects uh, and his son Alex is following in his footsteps so the Gandell family will certainly miss their um, patriarch and the community will certainly miss him as well as the others on these list uh, who were veterans thank you thank you Supervisor Parks go back. I have okay. no comments None? okay <laughs> Supervisor Flynn. Yes, I ask. Board adjourned memory of the people on this list, please. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Bennett. Thank you. I'd like to ask the board to adjourn memory of the people on this list. Also, like to point out to the board um, how um, well the city of Ventura and our watershed protection district are working together, and they're working uh, rapidly. I almost want to use the word frantically to try to make sure that we get the hall. Um, Canyon um, cleared um, and uh, San Juan Canyon cleared and the Calorama um, uh, Barranca cleared. All three of those have to be cleared before uh, we have a major storm. Uh, we're scrambling to try to get the permits that we need, try to patch the funding together that we need, but we literally are facing that as an emergency for the city of Ventura. It will flood if those debris basins uh, clog up or if those channels clog up and so we've got really have to hustle with that and I just want to publicly thank our watershed protection district I know those guys I, I'm Jeff, Jeff Pratt is sick now because I know he, how many hours he was working last week uh, late at night he'd be here uh, scrambling to try to make this happen and everybody else in watershed protection district doing that so I'd like to pass it on to the CEO also those guys are really hustling and it's, um, it's good to see the citizens absolutely need that hard work the other thing I'd like to point out since this is uh, the last meeting we have before the holiday season is that if you um, have some some extra dollars that you are willing to contribute here at uh, at the holiday time, the, we're going to be celebrating Dave and Bob. Uh, we're going to be celebrating Bob's uh, retirement here soon. But Dave and Bob have their children's fund, uh, and it is a fund uh, that raises money for the foster children of Ventura County uh, here at the holiday season. Uh, since 1992, they have raised. 
$176,000 for the foster children of Ventura County. But we have oftentimes in this boardroom talked about the foster children of Ventura County, that all of us need to be the extended family for those foster children. And so uh, I just would make a, um, a reminder that that's one of those funds that you could contribute to, one of many uh, worthwhile ones, but one that I think has a particular tie to us uh, in county government. Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, they'll be at Noah's Bagels across the street Friday morning. You can go drop your check off there for the Children's Auxiliary Fund. We'll talk a little bit about that when Bob comes in today. Um, I would ask the board to adjourn in memory of two folks in my district who passed away. Um, and I'd like to just make two quick comments on some items that have been um, recently in the in the paper uh, one is the closure of st. John's geriatric unit um, the Jerry Jerry psychiatric facility at st. John's has been closed and it was a business decision by st. John's but that leaves our county with no LPS facility for the elderly and that gave me great concern and I immediately um, had some uh, correspondence with Linda Shulman and, and uh, Dr. Duran, and I know we'll be bringing it to discuss with um, our oversight committee. Um, they have concerns with it, too. We, we know that through the um, plan that's just been submitted under Prop 63 um, that we will be expanding our seniors program that will assist with some of these clients. Um, but we are in need of some acute psychiatric beds and, 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 um, and for Jerry geriopsychiatric geri patients, our elderly psychiatric patients. Uh, so we will need to do some work on that, and, and um, that will, work will start when we uh, have a conversation with the um, leadership team at the health care agency um, this week. Uh, that is, a, again, a, a gap, a huge gap in our system in this county. Um, the other one is the article that uh, talked about our retail food facility inspection program. Um, I was very pleased that Robert Gallagher immediately uh, sent to us information that talked to um, what, in fact, we are challenged with in the retail food facility inspection program. But the first note he made was that um, our adopted budget of 0506 provide a ratio of inspectors of 19 inspectors to retail food facilities that is comparable to the ratio of inspectors to retail food facilities in Los Angeles and Orange County. Um, in the past two years, they have had difficulty recruiting, um, but they're working diligently to, to um, hire inspectors. The state law requires them to be registered environmental health specialists, and there is currently a shortage, and that shortage is statewide. Um, but they have been working uh, with Cal State University Northridge to provide a uh, state-approved curriculum to really uh, promote the <coughs> profession. They have a long-standing student intern program with CSUN and recently implemented a schedule of routine meetings with CSUN students to promote the intern program. And they've also started an outreach program with their community colleges, and they will continue to recruit. And I, I just wanted to put that out there for the public record because I think that the public reading an article um, may only read so far into it, may not really uh, really get the, the full picture of what um, what is in the county in the way of, of response and responsibility and I would not I was concerned with um, people's concerns and fear of, of going out to our very fine restaurants in this county and I know years ago when we worked on this we set up a, um, a training program that's been very successful with uh, environmental health and the food handlers where they come in and they and and that we have um, uh, uh, an aggressive training program, and that we also put uh, in the facilities the f that the facility has been inspected in the period of time it was inspected. So um, that's my reason for just putting some public comments out there, and I, and I appreciate um, uh, Bob Gallagher's immediate response on this, the ongoing work, and I would hope that, um, uh, as, and I'm sure they will, as they look at what other steps they can take, they'll bring that forward to the board in our budget deliberations next year to assist with that program. Supervisor Michaels, wish to comment on that one? Yeah, just real quickly, um, thank you for bringing that up. And I know not long ago when the community colleges had to make some cuts, they cut classes that provided training for um, some of our water inspectors. And the water districts, you know, that, that have mandates to meet as far as inspection um, and testing were really coming under the gun and 
So I talked to uh, Lynn Jacobs, and one of the things that the WIB, that was something that they could help get involved in because it's workforce training, and that might be the same um, type of thing that could go to the WIB for some sort of assistance with federal job training dollars, um, either to help the community colleges or, you know, do our own. So... If you're listening, Mr. Gallagher, you can call me and I will give you the information from the other project and see if that can work for us as well. Good. Thank you. All right, that concludes board comments. Um, are there any others to be added or shall we move right to our agenda? We've got a few minutes to get some work done here. Item 44, we'll move right to that, which is... Um, Establishment of new classifications, amendment of salaries. Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Good Johnston. Morning. I'm Barbara Jernay, Director of Human Resources. The item before you today uh, recommends that four new classifications be established and that salaries be amended for three other positions. Uh, the four classifications include an information systems architect, for the Information Systems Department to assist in the uh, security aspects of that operation, a Harbor Patrol captain that will be assisting in the expanded uh, patrols for the uh, Oxnard area new housing developments that our harbor will be taking on, a legislative analyst for the county executive office. Uh, in the past, this had been handled through a position that ultimately was cut through previous, previous budgets. However, the work has remained, and we are asking now that we centralize this uh, function in a, in a new position. And then lastly, for the established classifications, a senior deputy public uh, administrator, public guardian, uh, to provide additional assistance uh, to review and monitor the work in the public administrator, public guardian's office. Uh, the amendments to the salaries, the chief deputy public defender investigator incorporates a post incentive that enhances the skills of the individual who uh, would be assigned to that particular position. And then the other two amendments for weights and measures inspectors one and two uh, are salaries that had gotten out of alignment based on adjustments made to trainee classification. So in order to go from a trainee to a one was actually a demotion. So we corrected the salary on that, and in doing so, we also had to correct the weights and measures to inspector two level. Um, they, none of these will require... Um, Additional funding, uh, funding will be dealt with within the departments or asked for through another source. I think there's an additional board letter that will deal with the positions in the senior, in the, in the treasurer task collector's office. Um, with that, I would answer any questions that you may have. Other questions? So, just to make it clear, the harbor patrol captain, uh, the money for that, revenue for that comes out of the city of Oxnard primarily? Yes. Thank you. Other questions? Before, oh, Chris, um, Ms. Cohen. Madam Chair, um, recommendations three and four, we just need to, um, for accuracy, run the numbers all the way out on the hourly rates. I'm sorry if uh, Louise Webster didn't manage to communicate that to you. Um, on, the, on recommendation three, the from rates should read 15.593229 to 21.831438. And on recommendation four, it should read 17.121519 to 23.999388. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, um, the payroll system has six decimal points, and um, for expediency, we just put two down. <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Yeah. <laughs> May not for the government accounting, but All right, thank me. you. <laughs> Pleasure of the board. Move the recommended actions. Motion is second. Mo is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> Any objection? Hearing none. Second so just a little slow. Thank you. Item 45. Our assessor office. No. Good morning, Mr. Dursey. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, board members. Paul Dursey from the County Executive Office. Uh, hopefully, you do have a new page one, which we are uh, again fine tuning some of the point zero zero somethings. <laughs> on our on our annual salary range and, and hourly wages, uh, we are recommending the increasing of positions in the assessor, auditor, controller, and uh, treasurer, tax collector, and uh, we believe it's a, basically a, a good investment for two primary reasons. One is that it's a good financial investment. We uh, the general fund, general purpose revenues, 
is about 90% property tax based. So we think it's it's a, a the accuracy and timeliness of the uh, property tax data, which these three departments are uh, involved in, is is the utmost uh, good for the county and also a lot of other entities, uh, not only the general fund but the rest of the uh, counties that rely on uh, property tax as a revenue. Uh, the other thing is uh, we think it's a good idea because it will in increase the fiscal integrity and, and over the collection and disbursement and accounting and control over, we're talking about really li literally billions of dollars of, of not only tax dollars, not only government dollars, but also uh, dollars held for taxpayers in that regard. So we are requesting the five positions, the assessor, three in the audit controller, and three in the treasurer, tax collector, public guardian. And those, those, the details of those are in the board letter. And uh, the uh, dollars are coming, uh, our recommendation is the dollars would be coming from our contingency in the amount of $378,000. And uh, we, we believe that this uh, is it will provide uh, critical resources to assist these uh, elected departments in the uh, to fulfill their fiduciary responsibilities and maintain uh, the public trust. If there are any questions? I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Questions, Supervisor Michaels. Actually, it's it's not um, a question. Well, I have one, and then I'll make a comment. Uh, next year's budget, I assume, and five-year projection was looked at for these recommendations? Yes. Okay. Um, and the reason that I say that is we had some some tough times the last few years, and the people that got either hit the hardest or at least didn't get any help with increased workloads, et cetera, uh, were these elected offices and, and the staff that they need to do their fiduciary j duty. And... Everybody, you know, did the best they could and was a team player. And I'm very pleased to see this recommendation come forward now at a time when we believe that this can be done and it is the right thing to do. Core government is critical. And so especially as are those core government jobs that bring revenue in to the county and to the budget. So um, if there's no cards, I will move the item for further discussion. There is a card. There is a card, so I won't do that. But um, I appreciate the efforts of all, including the CEO's office and, and certainly Christine and Larry and Dan, um, the honorables who have done a yeoman's job in the last few tough years. Mr. Johnston, you had a comment? Yes, I'd like to uh, remind us from where we came <laughs> over the last four or five years that it's easy when things start to get better to forget how bad things were. And when we were faced with something approaching a $40 billion state deficit and the uh, issues associated with the 4088 uh, litigation that uh, finally was satisfactorily settled. Um, we were talking, we actually did lay off 125 people in the, uh, I think the third or fourth year. I think we laid off a few people each year during that very difficult time. Uh, it's particularly hard on those departments that are headed up by elected officials because they still have to stand for the voters just as your board does. And when the budget hearings come, there is kind of a, I won't say a conflict, but there is a dilemma for everyone wearing their administrator hats knowing that they have to somehow make this work and to accept the fact that there are going to be layoffs, uh, that your elected department heads were really outstanding during those hearings at not asking for more for themselves than what was happening throughout the county. Uh, and the understanding all along would be that as soon as we could straighten this out, that the first place we needed to put money back in was to be sure that we maintained the integrity of the taxing system and the way taxes are distributed. And one thing that is sometimes uh, not uh, noticed, we collect the taxes. The assessor has to create the role. The tax collector has to collect it. The auditor has to distribute it. But it doesn't just get distributed to county government. It affects schools, special districts. It affects everybody. And so my compliments to you for bearing with us. And uh, this is uh, just the first step in rebuilding the system now that our budget is in balance. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Metheny. Public card submitted, and we welcome you. Good morning. Thank you, and good morning to each of you. Uh, first of all, I just want to express my gratitude that each one of you are in the positions that you are and that we can uh, be discussing something that uh, a few years ago was as unfathomable uh, as uh, what this recommended action is. Uh, to update you on with my tax collector hat on, by the close of business today, we probably will have uh, processed something in the neighborhood of about $520 million on this first installment. I went back in the records and I found that we go back about seven years ago and that was just about the whole role. Uh, so we have um, come a long ways, and, uh, and I think even in the face of uh, the way our friends in Sacramento have uh, tinkered with the uh, county share of those property tax dollars, uh, nevertheless, uh, the county has benefited uh, by the uh, progress that has been made and the assessor being able to get those values on the roll and uh, my work together with the auditor's office and uh, making that come to fruition. So we're, uh, we're just feeling uh, uh, very good about the process. I wanted to uh, spend a moment to uh, just share with you how uh, also grateful I am that we would have a couple of uh, positions recommended in the public guardian's office. Uh, I uh, feel uh, very blessed to have Marilyn Scott now as uh, my assistant public administrator, public guardian, and with her help, uh, we have uh, tackled uh, a problem that uh, from moment to moment has felt like uh, it was wrestling with a, a basket full of eels. Uh, but uh, slowly and gradually by uh, trying to be consistent and trying to be methodical about it, uh, we are getting people in uh, previously vacant positions, uh, vacancies caused by a number of different things, uh, and we are reassembling a team within that office uh, with uh, a, a new culture, which uh, uh, is something that uh, doesn't happen very often in a, in a uh, manager's uh, career, to be able to just really build from the bottom up it isn't pleasant from moment to moment to uh, be doing that, but the benefits uh, will come out at the other end uh, in a, a much more solid organization that will um, be applying some uh, written procedures and guidelines uh, in a way that I think uh, will allow us all to uh, certainly allow me to sleep better at night. Um, and, uh, and these two new positions are going to be extremely helpful to us in being able to do that. So I, I hope that I've got the support of each of you, and I'd encourage your questions if any of you uh, are hesitant about it at all. Thank you for your comments. Any questions? Yes. Mr. Johnston has a comment. Yeah, to follow up with what the Treasurer is saying and the Administrator Guardian, um, during the difficult times when staffing was cut, the Administrator Guardian's position staffing, we held tight, but the problem facing the Treasurer is the demographics are such that the workload expanded well beyond, and so this is sort of you know overdue to expand the workforce to help him do that job, which is difficult and has been making the papers for some months all over the state of California. Exactly. Absolutely. Supervisor Flynn. Right. I'd like to uh, commend the CEO. <laughs> uh, I left he's my got, camera he's back. Got lots office. of candy here. <laughs> uh, I, it's the right move to make. Uh, the the assessor, for example, has come to us many many times in the last ever since he was started in this position for more money. He said, "If you give me more money, I'll be able to keep the role updated," and that means a lot as far as money coming into the county treasure. I'm happy with the auditor controller. Um, I, I think we kind of diminished the importance of that job to some extent, and I'm hoping that she is coming back to, uh, and we're receiving her into this county family as she should be. She's one of the major checks and balances in our system. Uh, and the tax collector, uh, you just told us now the amount of money you collected, and that's a lot to be responsible for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your good comments. Pleasure of the board. Move the recommended action. I'll second it with, with a comment. Uh, I know the elected department heads had many conversations with the CEO uh, about positions and about their staffing, and, and I just um, would like to compliment everybody involved in that. I think the system has worked. When, when times were tight, the CEO, I think we relied on the CEO to try to figure out 
where are those, you know, what his, his what his recommendation was in terms of those priorities. I think now uh, there has been an appropriate adjustment made, and that couldn't have happened as well if there wasn't that collaboration between all of the elected department heads uh, and the CEO's office. So I want to compliment them and hope that they'll continue to be able to work professionally and well together. And I certainly move and support the recommended action. Motion and a second. Other comments? I, I would just comment that uh, I'm glad to see that we're also increasing our reserves. And as we continue to increase our reserves and get them up to, you know, an ideal of 15 percent, we'll have less of these swings where we have to do layoffs and we'll be able to, I think, um, steady out our employment and get the right number of people and hopefully be able to recruit and keep them. But I, I'm comfortable with this knowing that we're also increasing our reserves. Okay. Motion and a second. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. And it is good work. We're taking conservative steps that are necessary to keep us healthy. Um, we're going to go to our 930. I know there's one other classification item, but I, I think our 930s are also uh, time certain and important, so we're going to go to them. So 930, our first one is um, Supervisor Michaels. Yes, thank you. Um, and I'm sure you probably realize this by now, but time certains cannot be taken prior to the time and unfortunately then we move on to business and sometimes we get beyond the announced time but unfortunately the Brown Act says you will take it at that time or later so my apologies um, but I would like to welcome to the boardroom today uh, a very brave and heroic officer officer Brian Ward from the city of Sumi Valley Police Department and Captain Ron Chambers congratulations that, that didn't happen too long ago, did it? A couple of weeks? Well, congratulations. Um, and if, if you would like to come down, I would like to make a few comments, and then I'll bring the resolution down and ask if either Brian or Ron would like to say anything. Um, and I will read a portion of the resolution because it's quite interesting and the reason that I'm so proud to be able to uh, have the board support this resolution for Officer Ward. Officer Ward has been a police officer protecting the citizens of Simi Valley for 13 years. On October 3rd of 05, Officer Ward was on duty and responded to a report of smoke in the area of Los Angeles Avenue. And this, as you probably read, is out toward the uh, Brandis Bardeen area. Um, <clears throat> as a fire, the area south of Los Angeles Avenue, as a firefighting helicopter from the Topanga Fire was circling over this new fire and reported seeing a male suspect in the fire area. A California Department of Forestry forestry, firefighting helicopter landed at Officer Ward's location and, and advised him that they had located the suspect in a remote location in the hills above Simi Valley. Officer Ward boarded the helicopter and was flown to the area where the suspect was last seen. While Officer Ward was searching for the suspect, the helicopter took off to search from the air. The helicopter crew spotted the suspect and directed Officer Ward to his location. Now, keep in mind, we're out in the hills, and there's nothing out there but this suspect and some animals, and Officer Ward is alone, no backup at this moment. Um, the suspect was not complying with Officer Ward's commands when Officer Ward got to the suspect, and the officer drew his weapon, his service weapon, and approached the suspect. The suspect became combative and yelled for Officer Ward to shoot me. Officer Ward used OC spray to temporarily incapacitate the suspect and the spray was ineffective. Officer Ward, with no immediate backup help, wrestled with the suspect until he was able to handcuff him and bring him into custody. Officer Ward had the suspect transferred to the local hospital for treatment of exposure to OC and for being under the influence of an illegal mind-altering substance. At this time, the board would like to um, honor Officer Ward for his bravery, for his professionalism, for his service to the citizens of Ventura County, and for taking an action that without backup could have been very um, dangerous and could have had a different outcome. But the suspect was uh, 
taken into custody. There were no fur further fires started. Uh, I see Chief Roper is here in the audience. And Chief, if you'd like to come down and say anything, certainly you're welcome to. Uh, but we are extremely proud of Officer Ward. And I know that he'll probably say I was just doing my duty, just doing what I'm trained to do as a professional police officer. Uh, but it was a it was a little over the top and above and beyond, and we're grateful that it, the outcome was positive and that Officer Ward was safe and has certainly made his department proud, has made me very proud, and I'm sure that the lady in the back is very proud as well. So I will bring this down, and if you'd like to introduce your guest and say a few words. This is my daughter, Kristen Ward. <laughs> She's a second-year school teacher. Very proud of her. His actions and that the helicopter's actions, they were able to put that fire out relatively quickly. It didn't spread and cause uh, too much more problem for us, although they were already fighting another fire on the other line. So, um, Brian does a great job for our department, an excellent job protecting the citizens of this, uh, of this county. So, thank you very much for the recognition. Also, so your board understands the complexity of an arson arrest is. There's uh, several fires that we come across every year that we suspect arson. But unless we can actually tie the suspect to the crime, circumstantial evidence is not enough to convict the suspect. So this was why this arrest of seeing the fire, arresting the suspect on site, really is proof remarkable and really puts somebody behind bars, hopefully, uh, prevent this from happening again. Congratulations. Thank you. We thank you. Congratulations. And thank you so much for coming to the boardroom. Thank you, Brian. Item Item 33, we're going to discuss and file a report of investments for the month ending November 30th. And there he is. <laughs> I was looking for you, Don. <laughs> and good morning. Do we have happy cheer for the end of the year? Yes. Yes, good. The best news of all, interest rates are going up. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's a good thing for us. I know that sometimes uh, somebody's ox is always getting gored, but in this particular arena, Higher rates are better, and for the 13th time in a row, the Fed should raise, will raise rates today to four and a quarter. Um, the futures market shows on Jan 3106, uh, Greenspan's last meeting, a 90% chance of another increase, four and a half. So that would also be good for us. Uh, from 1991 to 2001. Uh, Interest rates were three and a half to six percent, so we're really getting in the midpoint now of of where they've been for that particular decade. So I'm not sure what'll happen after that, but in the meantime, uh, we'll enjoy these rates. I am adding to our core position, which is the two to three year area, uh, anywhere from four and five eighths to four and three quarters. We do keep a lot of money short term for liquidity, and that money would trade neck for neck with these Fed increases. So uh, the short money will definitely track that, and then the core position out in the two to three area will uh, afford us some opportunity to pick up some yields at four and three quarters, and we will gradually add to that as the increases uh, take effect later in the uh, beginning of next year. Uh, that's really it. Uh, Greenspan's meeting, uh, his last one is Jan 31. I don't see a big change with uh, Bernanke. Um, I think the economy is doing great every time I look at the numbers. Uh, consumer sentiment was up really sharply. Uh, wholesale sales was up. And that's a good thing because that means that uh, if the wholesalers have increased sales, they'll uh, have to have increased production, which again, uh, helps the economy. Mm -hmm. So other than that, uh, happy holidays and good health. See you next year, unless All you have right. any questions. And we thank you. Any questions? Just, just a quick comment. Um, 
I have the, the pleasure of, of working with Bob um, not only on the retirement board but also on the, the uh, Treasury oversight. And we've talked a lot today about the quality of our managers, the quality of our employees, and how fortunate we are. And this is just another indication of how fortunate we are as a county to have somebody with Bob's background and his considerable ability uh, and knowledge in investments to be working here in the county um, probably could pull down a heck of a lot more money somewhere else. Uh, but likes his job. Getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning doesn't sound fun. But uh, I think we're very, very fortunate to have um, someone of the professional quality in this county because it's people's money that he, he's actually working with. He's very conservative, follows the guidelines, and has done quite well even in the hard times compared to Leaf and some of the others. We've always done very well. So at this time I would just like to, to acknowledge the quality um, that we have in Bob Hansen as our investment manager. Thank you. Thank Keep you bringing them much. dollars in and those percentage okay. points. You're very kind to say that. I, I hope it's all true, but uh, thank you very much. And I just want you to know that it, um, if I wanted to retire now, I could. Uh, I don't want to. I've been fortunate in my life. And I, I really appreciate uh, the support of the board and Mr. Johnston's uh, staff on the fourth floor. So it's actually fun for me. And I can honestly tell you, there isn't a minute of the day that I'm not thinking about this money and the safety of it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Pleasure of the board. Thank you. Wait, wait, one more thing. Okay. Last year I was asked who was going to win the big game. Oh, and yeah. now I will just tell you, Supervisor Michaels is wearing the right colors. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I, I have no doubt USC is going to win. No. And they have several Ventura County players on the team, too. Yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. And boy, will the retirement board meeting be fun, the first one in January. She's saying that because uh, football always comes up because the retirement board has so many different uh, Pac-10 schools represented. It's always a fun conversation. <laughs> There's a motion to receive and file. And a second. An objection. Hearing none, so ordered. And we thank you for the report and the good work. Our next 9.30 time certain is the second hearing adoption of our MOA with our Attorneys Association. Good morning, Mr. Nicole. Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Today you have the second hearing and the adoption of the Memorandum of Understanding for the one-year agreement with the Criminal Justice Attorneys Association of Ventura County. As you know, the contract was presented to you at your last meeting. It has been re approved and voted on by the Criminal Justice Attorneys Association, and it includes a 4% cost of living and the modifications in the uh, health care benefits so that they are now level with all of the employees in the County of Ventura. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have regarding this specific agreement. Any questions? Uh, Motion and a second. Any objection? And I just wanted to comment. I appreciate the board's policy, too, that everyone's health care sh should be taken care of equally because we all get equally sick and well. So I'm glad that we're doing that. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, so ordered. And that is the second hearing. I didn't have any public cards presented. We thank you for your work. Thank you. Um, next time certain item is... Uh, Item 35, and it is Ordinance on Commercial Weights and Measures. And that's going to be, thank you. <laughs> and that's going to be, uh, there you Item is. 35. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Delperdang. I'm manager for RMA Weights and Measures. Um, your board heard uh, first reading on this ordinance last week. Um, Marty Robinson gave a presentation discussing the uh, need to increase uh, device registration fees. I really have nothing to add unless you have additional Other questions. questions? Second. Motion and a second on uh, hearing no objection. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Item 36, adoption of an ordinance for the Board of Supervisors to repeal ordinance members rolling five-year strategic tobacco. Good morning, Ms. Camacho. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Norma Camacho with the County Executive Office. Uh, you heard this item uh, last week, December 6th. I um, was wondering if you had any questions that you needed me to me for me to answer regarding this ordinance. Any questions? I don't hear any. Lots any cards? No cards. Move the recommended action. Second. 
Motion and a second. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. And we thank, thank you. you. All right. Um, as the board knows, at 10 o'clock time certain has been um, request to continue that to February 7th. So we'll go back to our regular agenda and get some work done before the 10.30 time certain. So we are now back at item number 46. And this is reorganization establishment of new classifications for behavioral health, etc. Again, good morning. Yes, Madam Chair, Barbara Journey, Human Resources. Um, the item before you deals with some reorganization in the health care agency. It asks that uh, 11 positions be established, and then it also asks that we adjust some salaries to complete our man, uh, market-based average study uh, activities that we uh, began in November of this year. The positions that we're asking you to approve fall into uh, several areas. First, there is the public health area. Um, many of the uh, departments within the health care agency have not had any review of their organization in many, many years. Uh, as is such with the public health agency, they have not looked at its structure for the past 15 years. Um, what is being asked here is that we establish a position that would be consistent across uh, operational lines to serve as division manager. Um, the, there are areas right now where there are people performing these jobs and they are paid at various levels. This would certainly make it consistent uh, across that organization. Uh, in the behavioral health area, we find something very similar. Um, there has not been a review of that organization since the early 90s when AB 3777 monies were there to establish a model for providing services to the community. Since that time, many things have changed. Money has changed, uh, staff has changed, and various individuals at different levels have been asked to do a variety of jobs within that organization. What we're asking now is that we give it some structure and that we establish some specific uh, management lines, uh, division lines, uh, management manager lines and then still management positions yet operational uh, lines to give um, direction to the day-to-day -day activities of the teams that are assigned to the various regions of the county. And then lastly, uh, in the behavioral health area, we are asking for the establishment of a licensed mental health associate. Right now, we have a mental health associate classification that includes both licensed and unlicensed positions, and many times there are difficulties in determining which position will be assigned where because of those uh, uh, requirements or, or, or different qualifications for the position. Another area in which we're asking for uh, a change is in the uh, Ventura County Health Care Plan. That particular plan uh, has been very successful. Uh, it has been in effect, and yet the staffing has remained pretty much consistent. Um, what we would like to do is upgrade a position within that area to the Assistant Insurance Services Administrator to provide assistance to the administrator because of the uh, complex and, and numerous um, requirements for keeping that program going. That particular program now has the largest number of county employees uh, participating in it of all our medical insurances. Within VCMC, we are asking for some uh, ad arrangements and some in the organization for, in the nursing administration. Um, what we have right now, we have a, a director of hospital nursing, and then we have a lot of other, we may have shift supervisors, and then it's the same thing. We have nurses of various levels performing different jobs. What we would like to do is provide some consistency there and have a hospital nurse manager to handle the overall uh, staffing of the, and the clinical duties, and then a clinic nurse manager that would work directly with the various departments in the hospital in supervising and directing in those activities. Lastly, as I indicated earlier, we have the salary amendments. Uh, there are three amendments that we are requesting, uh, one for the uh, classification of Deputy Director Health Care Agency, uh, one for Director Behavioral Health, and one for Director Public Health. And when we did the MBA uh, recommendations and brought them to you in November, we indicated on some of them that we were still performing a review. Uh, we completed that review <coughs> and have found that adjustments need to be made uh, to the three positions, well, to the three classifications that I previously uh, mentioned. We are recommending that the adjustments be made in the same manner that they were for management. There would be a, a general salary increase of 4% and a maximum of 5% for the market-based average adjustment. And then dollars that were in excess of that would be added to the salary range for next year. Um, 
in doing this, uh, in approving this, we would conclude our MBA study and recommendations for all management positions and other positions recommended by other positions represented by the management resolution. And with that, I'll answer any questions that you may have. No other questions. I have one public speaking request card. Any questions? No questions at this time. I would invite Sandy Stewart up. Pardon me? Oh, they aren't here. Okay. All right. Well, then they're not here. Sorry. Okay, then the audience for the board. Move the recommended actions. Motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder how our new uh, chief thinks about this. <laughs> Item 47. <laughs> Item 47, uh, approve changing position, Proposition 36 lead agency. Mr. Johnston. Yes, uh, <clears throat> there was a, a good article in the Star that sort of summarized uh, this particular item. You will recall that uh, for the last two years the grand jury uh, has been recommending that we do something structurally to uh, – I don't think they're thinking of it so much as an experiment, although I do. Uh, I am not sure that this change necessarily will result in any uh, different outcome, but the uh, Behavioral Health Department, who has had the lead role on this, it is a collaborative, and so to whatever degree it succeeds or doesn't succeed, Behavioral Health has taken some of the public uh, criticism from the grand jury. Uh, in fact, uh, we are doing as well here as they are doing around the state. And in fact, the program itself is one that has frustrated uh, many people, including the public, as to the percentage of successful completions. Uh, in fact, the grand jury questioned if anyone could define what a successful completion was, but that didn't preclude them from commenting on the feeling that we had not uh, had enough graduates or, or people completing the program. Anyway, after a considerable amount of time talking over with everybody uh, from state officials to everybody on the collaborative, which includes all of your criminal justice system and the behavioral health people, um, we can't answer the question without uh, at least making the effort to try some difference in the structure to see whether or not that, in fact, will improve the outcome in the end. We point out to you that the, it is not the intention to immediately tomorrow morning change everything, both in terms of uh, who reports to whom and, uh, and the budget. But this is a standalone budget, and we will, with your board's uh, support, if you agree to uh, give us the authority to commence the process of transitioning to a new, new lead for the collaborative, we will be working be with probation, with the Behavioral Health Department, and all of the other departments, in particular the uh, court and Judge Dobroth, who has taken a leadership role in this, to uh, do this in a way to minimize any impact on the existing staff, but to continue to focus on treatment as the preferred outcome of all of this, and to get as many people into treatment and keep them in treatment until they reach the conclusion of what has been determined to be a successful outcome, uh, and that we think that uh, there is a chance this may, in fact, actually improve the process. It does go along with the advice of the uh, grand jury, um, and uh, we're all hopeful that uh, going through this extra effort that we will get a, a better outcome, and there is reason to believe it's possible. Questions? <coughs> do you have any cards? Oh, you have one. I do have one card. Uh, I do have comments after the card. Quick question. Um, it's not mentioned here, but is there an intent to report back to the board after a certain period of time? Certainly. To see, I'll reserve the rest of my comments, but anyway, a report back to the board after this transition has happened and it's been in effect for a year, whatever we uh, think we'll is. We'll be reporting to both your board and to the state. We'll be reporting to the oversight committee. Uh, we'll be looking at using the, sort of the same measurements. Uh, the, I, I spoke with Judge Dobroth uh, this past week. He's very aware that we need to be able to track this and to get more people in and keep them in treatment, and we will have those kinds of stats for you. Uh, there is still, still some debate as to what the proper measurement is. Uh, the UCLA has been doing some work, uh, I guess, on behalf of the state, uh, or at least maybe on behalf of themselves. But anyway, they're doing the kind of the um, 
research and uh, monitoring, trying to uh, you know come out with some determination as to what the proper outcomes are or what the successful outcomes are, and we'll share those with your board uh, as a progress report as we go okay. along. Okay, thank you. And, and I would point out that if this is not uh, you know the answer, if it, if we haven't improved the situation or if we, if it should go the other direction, I'll be back to you with yet yet another proposal until we. Uh, you know, hit upon the right combination. Okay. The card I have submitted again is Sandy Stewart, but she wasn't here before. I don't see her here now. Okay. So then there are no further cards on this item. Um, are there board? It's before the board. Madam Chair. Supervisor Just a, a quick comment. Um, yeah, this this is to me another example of initiative and how they are not often complete. The the intent is generally speaking a good one if you agree with the intent, but um, this has been and in my estimation will continue to be a difficult situation. And, you know, I, although I support the recommendation from the CEO's office, uh, I am quite frankly not looking for any miracles because I think inherently this is a very difficult situation to work with. Uh, you have cultures in the different agencies and the st stakeholders are trying you know, and have been trying to come together, uh, but it 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 is not easy, and the expectations I believe of the public were far and above what could, in reality, be achieved, and so um, I I disagree with the grand jury and that this should have been moved. I disagree that it wasn't. Um, being managed properly. I do agree that we're not getting the outcomes everybody would, you know, dream for. Uh, but I also believe that that is probably a pipe dream. And I hate to be so blunt, but I hate to see us throw more money, more staff time, and more confusion at a situation that is not a good one to start with. The premise is great, but the implementation is a devil, and so um, I, I honestly believe that um, there are improvements that can be made, and I certainly look to the quality and, and the leadership of probation to perhaps take a different approach, and, and perhaps by the third or fourth year we'll have a combination of approaches and finally get to the best place we can be. But um, I maintain that we weren't in a bad place uh, to start with. And so, Cal, I, if this passes, I wish you good luck. I hope very much that the cooperation and collaboration of the stakeholders continues. Uh, and I know at times it's dicey and it's tense, uh, but if everybody can stay at the table, all we can hope for is the best that we can achieve. And I think somewhere along the line we need to establish a, you know, a reality baseline here. So we say, okay, this is the best we can do. And if we can do this, we are at least meeting the intent of the voters and hopefully not um, throwing good money after bad in a program that is inherently difficult. Supervisor Flynn. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, addiction some of the people that get involved with the program are addicted to the drug or the alcohol, and so it becomes a real significant issue. Um, and I understand that behavioral health and, and probation will continue, will work together on this issue, so it's not like separating completely. Um, one thing about having it in behavioral health that identified it as a health problem rather than just a criminal problem and I like that part of it. But also probation is moving, at least from my observation, in the direction of treatment um, and treating people as a health problem. That's very evident in the juvenile justice uh, facility and uh, with a roundtable discussion with the judge 
participating like an equal with the discussion with various uh, people in the county. Um, and Cal uh, has been very good in moving in this direction, so I, I, I consider that plus. Plus the court itself. Judge DeBroth, um, in my view, is, uh, is one of the best people to work in this, uh, unless it would be Judge Back, and he works in like situations. So uh, I move that we adopt it. It's a motion and a second for adoption. Other comments? Yeah, I do have a comment. I, I want to thank uh, John Johnston for bringing this to us, and I want to thank um, Cal for his willingness to take it on. I hope you are. <laughs> um, it is a very difficult client base that we're working with, people who are have been arrested for uh, drug-related um, criminal offenses. And uh, a lot of these people are addicted. And in, in terms of the success of this program, yes, it was started by an initiative. Um, the intent is there. I think... Um, we can't just settle for what's, you know, it's good enough for government work. This is a program uh, that has shown only about, I think if I recall correctly, about a third of these people are actually successfully completing the program. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And one is because there is a lack of funding, I believe, for drug testing. Uh, one of the uh, successes of the program uh, told me that he was only tested once in the several months of the program. Uh, the problem with the program are people are falling out. Um, they are continuing to do drugs. They're not showing up for appointments. They need to be uh, have greater monitoring, uh, and I think that we can get that in our um, probation department. I think the therapy is wonderful that's being pr provided by our behavioral health department. We need to get the people there. We need to make sure if they're <coughs> not going there that they aren't given a free ride because otherwise they're supposed to be in jail. Um, I'm glad that, you know, we already have the experience with these agencies working on this program. We don't have to look back and say what's wrong, but actually move forward and say what can we do better. You know, whether, and what I would really like to see is um, Cal Remington come, come before us, let us know. I really want to know what you need to make this program work, to make it more effective. And I realize also that we are in our last year of funding. So it's kind of late to be moving this around, but it may also be one of those things that has to continue and we might not have the funding for. But uh, it may be also that the state may come forward with funds for it so it can continue and we can work on trying to be more successful. We might be in par with all the other uh, jurisdictions in terms of the about one-third success rate, but that all, uh, the bottom line is that it's subpar, and we have to, new, we have to do whatever it is that we can do. And I, I am actually hopeful, uh, maybe not a miracle, but I am hopeful to see that we will uh, improve that rate of people that are having to go and, and attending and, and graduating because uh, that's what it's all about. I also talked to some members of the Alcohol Drug Advisory Board. They are also supportive of this, the ones that I've spoken to. But it, uh, as I said, it is a difficult uh, process, a difficult program, difficult clients. Um, but I think it's important to keep them in treatment. And then also maybe working with uh, closer in terms of transitioning them out of the program. Because the day that, you know, you've succeeded, they may need a, a little bit more coaching and, and help. So maybe there will be uh, some assistance with behavioral health on that with maybe even Prop 63 funds. Yeah. So um, I just I wish you the best of luck. I look forward to the report back. And um, I know that we can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Bennett? Um, um, the, the, the fatal flaw is there's not enough funding for the testing. That's the big issue I have. Everybody's going to struggle with this. Good luck. I'm in favor of the change. Thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, just comment, too, in support of the motion. Um, I think it is a tough one, and we knew as an initiative it had flaws, and, and as all initiatives do, and they have unintended consequences. And I think that we have to be very willing to always look at ourselves and make sure that if things aren't quite working the way we'd like, that we're willing to make changes. Um, I, I think that the value of the report outs yearly will continue to be invaluable to us to make sure that we're looking at ourselves. <clears throat> but I, I had to reflect back on a comment made last week by Jeff Dean on another proposal um, that if you can save one life, and even with adults, if you can save one life um, through a program that's going to say to them, um, there, there's help for you, there's treatment for you, prevention works, then we need to invest. Um, 
until the point that uh, do the very best we can. So I appreciate that the willingness of probation and Mr. Remington to step forward in the leadership role. And Mr. Johnston, you want to make a comment? Okay. Well, motion and a second. Hearing no objection. So ordered. That is the vote. And now, Mr. Johnston. Yeah, I'd like to just make two points. One, this is still a mental health problem, and the focus is on treatment, and that will be worked out through the collaborative. And number two, I want to thank Linda Shulman. Uh, whenever you're the pioneer, when someone gives you something as ill-defined as what everyone receives throughout California and has to make some sense out of it, it's never easy. Uh, it, is, it is easy for critics to uh, want to blame those who are attempting to invent it uh, and maybe place more responsibility there than is, uh, is fair. Uh, I want to thank you and your staff for what you've done. Uh, someone once observed uh, that meetings like our original oversight collaborative is sort of like a prayer meeting of the non-believers. Uh, and I want to thank the Reverend Shulman for bringing the, those folks together because the last meeting we had, I think everybody is a believer in trying to come, you know, to do something uh, well and to do the right thing. And it was a collaborative decision and it was a consensus decision. So uh, that's a credit to Linda. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, then. Um, thank you for that recommendation and the good work. Item 48 uh, has been pulled. Item. Did we vote? We voted. Yeah. yeah we voted. No objection. We voted. Item 49. Moved to receive and file. Second. Motion and a second. Hearing no objection. So ordered. We have time to go into closed session, board members, and get some work done. A little bit, anyway. And then we'll be me. out here sharp at 1030. And invite any of the county employees who want to take a coffee break to come down and thank Bob Adams. Please feel free. What? We did that oh, with the agenda. We did that with the agenda action. We, we have to do it at 10 o'clock? Madam Chair, yes. I, I frankly didn't hear it done at agenda oh, review. Okay, well, and, I'm sorry. And, All right, and, we okay. have a... A 10 o'clock item that needs to have the action, formal action. Move to have the item second. continued. Continued. Motion a second to continue the item to February 7th. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back and do closed session and get some work done and be back out here at Sharp at 1030.
guys are all great. Here's what. <laughs> Get to the dais so we have a 10.30 time certain and other timely items. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. And this is the fun stuff. Um, maybe bittersweet for some, but fun also. We want to make this fun. It, it really was, um, it is my pleasure to have uh, invited Bob Adams to come in so that we could all take an opportunity and those listening in the county and others to thank him for his radio career in our county, um, to thank him for his professionalism, his um, integrity and in how he approached every bit and every day of his job and his contribution to many of us in this county. And, and we're going to hear from our public safety folks. And I, I'll let you know that Craig Husbands is going to have um, something to say from our sheriff's department and Bob Roper from our fire department and um, Pamela Grothy representing the Children's Auxiliary. And I gave a plug this morning, Auxiliary, Noah's Bagel, Friday morning. <laughs> Give money. But <laughs> I'm going to read some of this from the resolution um, and then come down to present it and invite the others up also. Um, Bob Adams began his radio career in our county in 1969, and he's provided valuable real-time public safety information and news every year to the residents of the county. During 36 years as a journalist, Bob reported directly from the scene of numerous significant incidences covering fires, earthquakes, and floods around the clock. His capacity as a radio journalist received him numerous Associated Press and Golden Mike Awards, and along with his partner Dave from the Dave and Bob Show, hosted this show together for more than 19 years. And in his capacity as co-host, Bob hosted several successful on-air blood drives for United Blood Services, encouraging hundreds of residents to donate blood, raise money for Ventura County Special Olympics, um, helping out in countless individuals and families in need in the process, and enlightened the public to the importance of the issues and encourage them to help those most in need in our county. In 1992, um, Bob Adams and Dave uh, established the, the Children's Fund that has benefited our Children's Auxiliary Services for, um, for years, raising more than $376,000 to benefit our foster children. Countless times before dawn, standing out in the cold, standing next to the fire trucks, talking to the, making sure that the public safety folks were um, uh, appreciated and his team at uh, the radio station and under the leadership of Gold Coast Broadcasting is just an outstanding public service job in this county for years. Bob, um, in collecting donations for the Children's Fund, such as at Noah's, Noah's Bagels on Friday morning, um, selfless effort to make the holidays brighter for the hundreds of children in our county who are foster children and the families that appreciate that good effort. Through these and many other creative, compassionate efforts, Bob Adams has brought immeasurable entertainment, laughter, and humanity to thousands of Ventura County residents over the years. But after a long and illustrious career in radio, Bob will be retiring on December 30th or 31st or whatever day he squeaks out on there. Uh, but he will be leaving with us a spirit of giving that will live on for generations. In appreciation for his years of service, the board in recognizing Bob Adams in this resolution today, certainly we offer him best wishes for a healthy and long-deserved retirement filled with good health and family times to share with his wife, Lupe, who's with us. I heard today that there's already, this morning, that there's already a new job for Bob, that he's going to be delivering newspapers. <laughs> it's a new career. So I would like to step down and present this to Bob um, and invite him up to the podium, please, to receive it, and then we will invite our other representatives who we've invited to join you this morning. Framed and everything, Bob. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And no, 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 you can't get away. <laughs>
Stand up here. And let's have, let's have Craig Husbands up, our undersheriff, on behalf of Sheriff Bob Brooks and the full department, I'm sure. Thank you, Supervisor Long. Thank you, board members, for allowing us to be a part of this recognition for a very special individual. First of all, Bob, it's great to see you someplace other than at a crime scene or a disaster. <laughs> And uh, he must be one of the hardest working reporters I've ever met because at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning he would be out there and um, obviously be reporting from the scene and acquiring information. And then I turn on the radio at 5 or 6 in the morning and he's on the radio. And uh, he's just an amazing individual. He's the kind of person that our PIOs, when they were out in the field, the first thing that they did when they saw him there was they said, Bob's here. We need to get as much information as we can as quickly as we can so that we can help him so that he can go home and get some rest. Mm -hmm. And they really thought about you in that fashion. I can think of very few individuals who have had the impact that Bob has had on public safety, both in terms of longevity and the magnitude of it. Uh, he's a person that virtually everybody in this county turns to for information when a disaster strikes or there's a, a crime that needs to be uh, put out to the community. And Bob is the person that the Sheriff's Department relies upon to get that information out. He works with us in a collegial fashion in helping us get the information to the public in a very positive way. And uh, he's just been a wonderful asset and a wonderful individual uh, for the community and for the Ventura County Sheriff's Department. And so I have the pleasure on behalf of the sheriff and all the members of the Sheriff's Department to present an award that is very rarely given, and it's the highest award that we give to someone who's not a member of the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, and that is to make uh, Bob an honorary deputy sheriff of the Ventura County Sheriff's Department. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, Members, the Board, Mr. Johnson. It's with great pleasure that I'm here today to recognize Bob. Along with that, I bring Joe Luna, my public information officer, who's worked with Bob for over the years. Really, the people in Ventura County will really won't realize what they're missing with Bob's retirement until the next major emergency because Bob is truly the only person in Ventura County who does live, local, breaking news uh, broadcast when something bad goes on in the county. As the undersheriff said, Bob's out there at 2 or 3 in the morning working along with us. Uh, then he's on the air at 5 in the morning and stuff. And it's remarkable what he does. Besides what Bob does on the radio, Bob also has been a contributor to our Valor Awards program. He sits as one of the public members reviewing all the nominations to see who's worthy of the award. And then he participates in our ceremony itself. Bob is not like some newscasters that I've had to deal with who are in your face. Bob's always patient. You know he's there. But he's always standing to the side. He waits for us to get done, commanding the emergency. And then we go over and work with Bob and get the information to him so he gets it out. Together with the team of Rich Galano and the other people at the radio station, Ventura County is proudly served by what Bob has done over the years. I did make a grave mistake early in my career and did an interview with Dave and Bob during the show, and I made mention it was the Bob and Dave show. And Dave let me know that was the wrong thing to say, but I would have to acknowledge for Bob's purposes, Bob is the live newscaster of Ventura County, and it is his own show from the news. So with that, we would like to recognize Bob from all the public information officers of the Ventura County Fire Protection District and all my command staff officers who's worked with Bob over the time. What I have is a plaque with Bob's picture and a CD that the staff from the radio station helped us with. This is Bob's live interviews from the school incident that was just recently done. It does pop off. It is something that memorializes your job and, and what you've meant to us, along with a resolution we'd like to honor you with today. Thank you so much. 
Children's Auxiliary, Pamela Grothy. Thank you, Supervisor Long, members of the board, Mr. Johnston, and but most of all, thank you, Bob Adams. On behalf of the Children's Services Auxiliary uh, and the uh, President, Joan Gendro, who can't be here today, she's uh, very busy making preparations for the annual holiday toy store, which absolutely wouldn't be possible without the generous um, donations of your time and your heart that you've given over the years. Um, $376,000, more than $376,000 has been raised by the, the Bob and Dave's Children's Fund <laughs> over the years. And through that generosity and not even just the, the money but the interest in the Children's Services Auxiliary that, that you've provided through the years has made the holidays brighter for thousands of children and, and families throughout our community. Um, children that now, through the, the efforts of the auxiliary, are able to have other needs met, such as unmet dental needs, able to go to camp, able to have a computer to go to college. All of those are examples of things that have happened because of you. And it's your heart that we've heard celebrated so much already this morning. And we thank you, and we will miss you. you. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, before Bob starts his comments, I'd, I'd just like, like to try to just point one thing out, and that is that when you have the power of the microphone or the power of the pen uh, with the press or the power of the dais, um, and you have it for a long period of time, um, People can use it for tremendous good or, or people can abuse it. And we've, we've seen both in our society. And to have somebody in our community who so consistently, so calmly, and with so much dignity constantly use the power of the microphone for the good of the community, it's just its an honor to say that, that we've been you know, in the same county with you. I think just hearing from the Children's Fund and thinking of all those foster children, but it wasn't, I mean, it's, it's, that's just one example and over and over again in terms of how you have used it and, and used it for the good of the community. It's just so impressive. Thank you very much. Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> You know, it's a lot easier being the news reporter than it is being the news maker. <laughs> so many nice things have happened in the last uh, couple of weeks that uh, there's just no way that I can thank uh, everybody that's come forward. I keep saying, you know, all I am is a radio guy, and I'm just being treated so well by people that uh, I just uh, I just really, really want to say thanks to all of you. Uh, and And... I've been very, very uh, blessed in my life because uh, I'm, I've been able to do what I want to do. You know, I mean, there's, I get up in the morning and go to work. It's like uh, somebody said, you don't have any hobbies. And I said, well, my work is my hobby because I just enjoy it. Um, you know, be able to laugh for four hours in the morning and, uh, and to be able to chase fire engines and police cars. And it's, uh, you know, there's a little boy in me and it's, uh, I still have it. But uh, it's going to be tough uh, leaving Ventura County. We've uh, been here since 1969, and it's just like heaven. But my family lives in Fresno, and uh, Lupe and I bought a home in uh, Idaho three years ago up in the Tetons, and it's just beautiful, and we want to spend a whole summer up there and stuff you can't do in a two-week period. So we thought this is a time to get out and, and do it. But we'll always, uh, everybody we know lives in Ventura County outside of my family. So I know we'll be back a lot, and, uh, and we're going to miss it dearly. 
And thank you uh, for uh, all of you who have supported our Children's Fund. It's really an important thing for me. I think that uh, the generosity in this county is unbelievable. Whenever we've asked people to help us for something, they've always been there. And um, it's just... Um, it just makes you feel good that you have the opportunity to, to be able to uh, use the radio to get people to uh, donate to help in when times of need. Uh, Dave and I always say it's not us that, do, that raises the money. It's, uh, it's we're just merely the facilitators, and we have the opportunity to ask people to do that. And then it's but it's the citizens of this county that are so generous. And uh, I think we're all grateful for that. So thank you for your support. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Bennett. Uh, he has come to every blood drive that we've ever had where he could, uh, where he could donate. Because, you know, sometimes the timing isn't right for you to donate. But everyone he could, he's been there. And so thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm so honored to, for all of you to think of me. I re really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to do a group photo. All right. We're going to do a quick group photo of the presenters and the awards with Bob, and I'd like to invite Loopy to join us. And I want to ask management, does he get lifetime okay. cruises? Huh? 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 <laughs> Retirement benefit?
Yeah. 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 current and projected water demands for the next 25 years for the district customers. The plan also identifies sources of water supply, namely groundwater, reclaimed water, desalination of brackish groundwater within South Las Postas Basin, imported water supply, and water, de water demand management practices through water conservation. Imported water supplies are supplied from Metropolitan Water District through Cayegas Municipal Water District. Both Metropolitan and Cayegas uh, have taken steps to di diversify their existing water supply resources to enhance service reliability to the district's water customers. Recent Metropolitan Water District Integrated Water Resources Plan indicates that Metropolitan Water District resources or water resources are sufficient to attain water reliability for the next 20 years. Based on the analysis set forth in this 2005 urban water management plan, the district's total projected water supplies available will meet 
the projected water demands within the district service area. We are asking that your board approve the resolution adopting the urban water management plan for Waterwork District Number 1 for submittal to the Department of Water Resources, California State Library, and City of Moore Park. Uh, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there questions? Are there any cards? I don't have cards. Okay. I would move adoption of the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any objection to that? Hearing me. I, I didn't have any speaker cards. I don't hear any objections. <coughs> so ordered. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank thank you. Good, Good work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you as well. I'll see we should have these things available okay. to be heard, but we don't. So we'll go back into our closed session okay. and get that done. Okay. Yep.
All right, board members. Um, my watch says 11:30, but that's because I plan ahead. Um, item 40 is the item we will be hearing first, and perhaps we could start with the um, staff report on it. Um, it is the uh, revised Channel Islands Harbor Public Works Plan Amendment for Channel Islands <laughs> Harbor Marina Vintage Marina. And again, it is item 40. Good morning, Madam Good morning, Chair, Ms. members Mr. of the board, Mr. Johnston. Uh, I will make this short because I know you are under some time constraints and very simple. Uh, in September, you approved a public works plan amendment uh, related to the rebuild of the former Channel Islands Marina, now Channel Islands Harbor Marina. Uh, in cooperation with coastal staff, we are suggesting that that public works plan amendment not be changed but be divided in two. This limits it just to the water side. The land side, since we are now catching up on the entire public works plan update, would just be put into the update. Um, this is a concession to coastal staff who are very busy and want to get this to hearing and are most concerned about getting the water portion to hearing because of the state of deterioration of the docks. This is not at all unusual because uh, the Coastal Commission, as you recall, has original jurisdiction in the water. So even in local coastal plans, um, where the land is handled by the local agency, the water is always handled by the Coastal Commission. And so there is often this kind of divide. It is not at all unusual. So all we're asking for you to do today is to revise the originally adopted amendment to just limit it to the water side changes. You have a red line in front of you, and I'll make that the end of the staff report. And you'll see, based on our new procedures, this is being done by resolution. And a question, any questions at this time of staff? I have uh, one question. In um, dividing it up between um, land and water, some of the uh, recommendations in the water side portion um, really kind of uh, connect with the land, slot, land side ones. Uh, for example, there's a kind of a contingency to deal with the loss of slips by dry docking them. Um, is, does that have to be specified location-wise? Oh, okay. In terms of the dry storage, I should have uh, been more detailed on that. You'll notice that is still in this amendment because they regard that as part of the slips. When I say the land side is removed, I mean only the um, upgrading of the restroom facilities, the yacht club, and right. so forth. But in terms of the dry storage, that is still in here. The location is not identified today, but will be during the course of construction uh, of the marina. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Flynn? Right. Um, by dividing them, when once they were submitted as, together, uh, there was a cost submitting them to begin with. So what kind of money is uh, is being spent on doing this action? On this action, um, we, don't, we won't know till we receive the billing. I would say it's relatively small, but remember that cost is borne by the lessee who's here today. That is not a cost borne by the county. The lessee reimburses us for our costs related to those kinds of changes. Well, we have a reimbursement agreement signed by the lessee. Reimbursement agreement that would cover the consultant? Yes. So the consultant's uh, cost, which is another issue, is being borne by the applicant? That's correct. Other sorry. questions, Supervisor Park? I'm sorry, I have another minor question. Um, just in the uh, exhibit, you have the work plan, the first page. The second page is the document history. And it Correct. talks about the board adopting um, Coastal Commission action adopted by the board, and it's got a date of July. Um, since we had to, is this the one that we had to readopt in December? Yes, so that will now have to be corrected. This was issued for review before your action last week. Okay, so um, will we, if uh, the board approves this, be approving an amended document here, an amended exhibit that includes the December date? Yes, if you want to specify in a motion to add in last week's action to the action, the document history, we'd be happy to do that. Other questions? Supervisor Bennett? Just 
one quick question. By dividing the land and the water, uh, this action would allow us to replace the docks sooner, the, the, the aging docks that we're trying to get replaced. Correct. Is that correct? Thank you. I have a speaker card on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Vicki Finan. Hello, um, I'm Vicki Fine. I'm speaking on behalf of the Beacon Foundation. Um, I, I think that there is a, um, I'm so confused about which actual number of, of public works amendment we're on and which one's been withdrawn and which one's not withdrawn on this. And, and I, obviously uh, with uh, the level of involvement that I have had on this, it's, uh, it, it's under, it should be understandable to your board that the public has been left out of this process. They don't know about this. This is a public hearing. There's major, this is a, uh, going to require a public works amendment, and you're, you're not, you've given your no, notice with seven, uh, 72 hours to the public on this, and um, I don't believe that that's proper when you're, when you're going to require a public works amendment. We, we brought to you in September, um, noti we notified you that your public works document said that this, this um, expansion, extension into the harbor, which is what this proposal is still doing, was uh, going to require a public works amendment. So um, there's, I don't know how you can how you can split the two projects and uh, uh, the land from the from the uh, from the water side and um, and expect to get any farther down the road when you haven't addressed the issues that you had with the reduction of your boat slips, uh, your requirement to keep a certain number of boat slips according to your public works document, and your requirement to um, um, to replace the boat slips that you've that you're changing with this reduction um, and it, it seems to me that um, it's just was put together very quickly it was even put together without uh, any oversight or any looking at this by the Harbor Commission which meant the which met the day before um, this agenda was posted they met regarding another the other vintage property um, on another project that was declined by the Harbor Commission. So they didn't even have an opportunity to tell you whether they think taking these two things apart is a good idea or not a good idea. And um, I just think that there's a lot of issues that need to be resolved here. Mainly, I'm, you know, a couple of weeks ago you had the uh, entire room filled with uh, boaters complaining about things. Um, it's it's uh, about the slips going up and, and prices like this, and there's nobody here today. Does that make you wonder what's going on here? I think there's just not been enough public notice to this, and, and I think that there's a, um, it's just not ready to be um, approved by you, and I would hope that you wouldn't approve this at this time. Bring it back after um, more explanation. Thanks. Okay. I don't have any further cards submitted on this item. Madam Chair, okay. I would move approval of the recommended action. It seems to me that, you know, given the Coastal Commission uh, staff is the one that's interested in seeing this done and our need to move forward uh, to with the replacement, you notice how I said our, with the replacement of <laughs> the aging infrastructure, uh, I believe that it's important to go forward with this. To me, it is a technicality to meet the needs of the, the Harbor Commission. Uh, it is not a new decision, and it is not a new item. So I make the motion. I'll second it. That I'd ask, respectfully ask that you add oh, right. I'm sorry, uh, I last week's that. action to the yes. changes of the document. That will be an accepted amendment to the motion. Council recommends that. Yes, that would be fine. I think the uh, July 26th date needs to stay, though, because and then for the add same the reason second that one. was discussed last week. <clears throat> right. The motion and a second. The Supervisor Flynn. Let me speak to the motion. Um, I'm going to oppose the motion for the following reasons. This is a public hearing, and yet you go through the information that's been given to the board in our packets it's not really very understandable. Someone coming in, say, fresh, without any background at all, a citizen, looking at this could not understand it at all. 
Um, it, it's kind of a kind of comparable to spot zoning, incremental planning, and it's not serving the public the way it should. Information should be out there so that everyone understands it. I do have a problem with the way that the uh, um, public works plan is titled Channel Islands Harbor Public Works Plan. <coughs> It, it, it should follow something like this. If you have a public works plan, which we do, dated 1986, and it's a, it's a document, and you're going to amend it, you shouldn't amend it, in my view, in the middle of the document. You should have amendments at the end of the docu document, somewhat like the Constitution of the United States. You don't put words and pieces of information in the middle of a document like that. It should be an amendment type form, I think, to the document itself. Let's just look at the, uh, the cover page and then look at the next page, Channel Islands uh, Public Works Plan. And we have it crossed out here, originally certified by the California Coastal Commission September 19, uh, 1986. That shouldn't be cost crossed out. That should stand. It should be a standing document that you amend. And it's, uh, it's not prepared completely by Cobleson, Adams, and Associates. And as you read through the document, uh, like the document history, it doesn't really explain whether or not these things have been adopted. And going on through the document, I'll, I'll just use one page for example. Uh, if you turn to page 45, um, I think that was the page. I think I have the page mixed up. But if you look at several pages here, like page 3, is this a Culbertson, Adams, and Associates uh, map here, or is it a map from the original public works plan? My objection here is that we're we're interspersing language for like the BISC or, or other language that Culbertson came up with in the middle of a document. It's, you know, if you've taken a course in historiography in college, as I did, this, this simply doesn't follow any type of rules at all. It violates rules, if you will. Uh, where are the amendments here in this document? public works document. Yeah, I mean, can you answer that? Uh, yes, they are the highlight strikeouts within the document. Any place you see an underline, unless it says original to the document, uh, or a strikeout, those are the changes. There are very few of those changes. And the, I actually, I happen to agree with you, these amendments should be at the end, but that is not the protocol of the Coastal Commission, so we do it the way they wish. Well, the, the document ought to service the people. Um, I don't want to argue with you about it. A, a document like this, it's hard to understand. First of all, and foremost, serve the people so they understand what we're doing. And second of all, satisfy this board. And the document doesn't do that for me. Uh, you have a section on the BISC in here. Was that a section written in <laughs> It was a section written just lately, really, in the last few several months and yet we're putting it right in the middle of a document I propose that we use all these changes that you're you're coming up with as an amendment to the document so we can go right to the amendment instead of trying to read the whole um, public works plan thank you madam chair supervisor parks thank you um I appreciated getting this whole uh, public works plan uh, amendment document. I guess we're not, uh, it was helpful for me to read and I take it this now incorporates the Coastal Commission conditions in it also. And um, <clears throat> I noted in one of the conditions, for example, regarding mitigation for the BISC, it says the county shall be responsible for the replacement of an equal or greater area of park to the loss, that lost in construction. So I thought, well, we all are acknowledging now that it is a park, because I know that was one of the arguments we had, whether it was actually a park. So it has, um, you know, we do have more detail in here. Um, not everything um, 
I guess it incorporates the BISC public amendments, public work amendments too, so I'm now looking at this full document. But what struck me and why I voted um, against it the last time this uh, came forward was the fact that while we agreed and I agreed, you know, go out of 20 feet over where Vintage Marina is, I was concerned about the broadness of that one, of how we worded that one um, uh, portion of the amendment which allows for extension to other parts of the harbor to 20 feet into uh, the waterway. Um, because uh, of concern for the wording that said only under emergencies will you ever do something like that. So I was concerned and uh, now that I have this whole document in front of me and it talks about on page 29 and that you know the, the Harbor Department has shown that flow ca capacity problems do occur on weekends and holidays and then there's a whole section in here on page 52 that goes on and on and on, and I think a lot of it is in relationship to the Mandalay Bay that came forward where our county was objecting to the amount of boating traffic. And it uh, talks about congestion in the Channel Islands Harbor entrance channel is and will continue to be critical. Uh, because of that, Mandalay B Bay, they're talking about congestion would increase 70% over present levels. Um, how a study that was done for the Mandalay Bay um, wasn't uh, really reflective. It, for example, uh, looked at regularly spaced intervals for the boating, boats that came in when they actually come in in clumps. And it, it was just interesting to read uh, about how the county has decided to try to address this critical problem of crowding uh, congestion in the harbor. And um, it made me even understand even more how important and uh, it is not to uh, limit the width of the harbor. Uh, they talk about on windy days, for example, you only get one boating lane worth. So uh, I, I realize now that this is a big issue and one that I didn't, wasn't quite aware of. But do note that I voted against this previously because of the fact that um, on page 56, the wording is a uh, Specific, you know, broad enough where it now talks about where a marina expands beyond the pier head line. In no case shall the expansion exceed 20 feet. So it wasn't even specific to vintage. We went and now are kind of giving a opportunity in the public works plan to allow for that expansion elsewhere. Um, I'd rather we didn't do that because now I understand a lot better about the congestion issue. So I voted against it last time. We'll also vote against it for specifically for the congestion issue. Thanks. Any other comments or questions? Comment. Um, th this has this letter I received from Linda Schrader, I think her name is. She talks about the size of her boat, and uh, she says this: "I have been boating most of my life and hope to boat the rest of my life. I am a 40-plus year mother. I am proud owner of a 23-foot sailboat docked in the county small boat marina." My family has, however, a limit as to how much I spend on my love, my little boat. We, are, we have limited funds, and small boats should not have our boats pushed out of the water for a smaller number of those who can't afford it. It seems to me the direction of the harbor seems to be going towards uh, a harbor for a more limited number of people. And when you think that uh, and know that BISC money is public money, and public money has been spent on that harbor. We should not use the harbor and these different amendments as a way to exclude people, and yet that's what we're doing. That's a generalization. Channel Islands Harbor is becoming a harbor for people who have the money to put a boat there and a, a longer boat there. So we're headed in that direction. We're heading in the direction of a harbor simply for the rich people. And it should be for the common people, for all people, including the rich, but also for those like this mother uh, who has a 23-foot boat and others who have expressed dismay at what we're doing. Uh, when they come back from a, a trip someplace, they find they no longer can live aboard their boats. That's in another marina. But it's still a movement against the common people. That's the way I see the direction we're, we're taking here. Um, so I'm going to vote against. Further comment? 
Madam Chair, just real quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll be supporting the motion. I just want to make these comments very quickly with regard to how this thing is laid out. I think all of us know we've been in, in these, in these um, discussions long enough that if we follow the Coastal Commission uh, recommendation, we're criticized because it's not laid out re very well. If we don't follow the Coastal Commission's recommendation, then we're criticized for not following the Coastal Commission recommendation. Um, I, I appreciate Supervisor Parks is, is trying to vote consistently on an, on an issue that she did, but when it comes to these procedural things and stuff, you can always find something. As, when you have complex uh, issues like you have at the harbor, you can always find something if you want to. But um, we've had a lot of people say we need to get moving in terms of making improvements in the harbor. Uh, a lot of people have criticized uh, us for not moving uh, fast. And if you want to get moving on the improvements in the harbor, then I think this is a common sense um, procedural request of the Coastal Commission staff. And uh, consequently, it is one we should support. If you, do, if you don't want us to move, uh, then I, I think it's, it's uh, um, with, these, with these improvements, I think it's very easy. You can always find something uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to not do that. So uh, with that, I'll be supporting the Madam uh, Chair, I'd like to just make one more comment. Uh, we're not moving very quickly. For what reason? For the reason that we've made so many mistakes. Even the last hearing of the Coastal Commission, they identified the mistake. You had to come back to the county uh, board of supervisors again to do something properly. We're simply not doing things properly, and therefore the the uh, the time is has been extended for all those mistakes. And again, remember this: we are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. If the people can't understand what we're doing here which they could never understand reading this document here in this uh, item number 40, uh, they, c they can't understand that. And we are a government to make, to help them understand it. And if I may, just another comment. Again, the focus on congestion. As you read this issue about congestion, even talks about how the, um, you know, the BISC, uh, youngsters out there sailing um, will have to be limited in their ability to do that Talks, uh, because of the congestion. Uh, they can only do it at certain times. And it may not be weekends. But it also talks about in a surveys of 20 harbor boaters in that EIR on Mandalay Bay found that 18 of them had experienced accidents within the harbor. So I just, I just have a, a newfound appreciation for the uh, necessity not to crowd the harbor. In addition, it defines what this harbor is, is basically recreational boating. Um, that's what's there, or um, facilities for uh, docking for gas and such. Those are the only two things out there. And when we go ahead and amend this to allow for 20 feet, you know, you shall never, you know, go into the waterway, it says here, um, unless it's an emergency situation, uh, we're amending it to say, or if it's for a recreational boating opportunity. Well, we know that's the other, that is what's out there. So just to me, it really um, undermines that whole basis of trying to protect the harbor from congestion, which is one of the charges that we have. I can understand in my mind why we need to have such a broad, we can't just say for vintage we'll go 20 feet. This is a very broad um, allowance that can allow other uh, marinas to go out into that 20 feet waterway. And I think the reason we're doing this is because otherwise we're granting special privileges to one marina. And I think we're going to have to think about that. When another marina wants that extra 20 feet, how can we justify not doing it for them if we're allowing it for vintage? So um, I think that's why the wording is deliberately broad and, as I mentioned, a concern because of the congestion. <clears throat> okay, I uh, certainly will support the motion. I think that this is a living document, and it is something that we always have discretion. So I don't think that anything in here says precedence or, or that we're mandated um, gives us always the option to review proposals as it moves ahead. I think that we do get criticized for process when we follow it, process when we don't follow it. Um, I think the item that was listed on our agenda that was posted last week that clearly describes the action before us and probably more direct layman's terms um, certainly gave uh, notice as, as uh, we are looking at this as being a procedural. It is not a, a um, it's not something that uh, I think anyone's trying to hide the, hide the, hide the boat. 
Um, so the it's a motion and a second, and I hear two objections. Um, so it passes 3-2. Our next item, time certain 1130, amendment to consulting services contract with Culperson, Adams, and Associates, Inc. Again, very briefly, due to your time, Lynn Krieger from the Harbor Department. Uh, the last time we were here before you, and I'm looking for when that was, again on September 20th, 2005, uh, we had a recommendation from the Harbor Commission that this uh, particular contract be put out to uh, request for qualifications to see if there were other interested parties uh, and you asked us to do that on an expedited basis we have done that we started it immediately um, and we are back to you now uh, Culberts and Adams Associates was the only respondent to the uh, request for qualifications we did hear from all people uh, who we sent this to I believe there were six this particular uh, amendment to the contract has been back to the Harbor Commission last week and was recommended. I have to tell you, I don't remember right now exactly what the vote was. Mr. Johnston, you were there as well. Three. Seven to three or six to three, but it, it, there was a vote in favor of proceeding with this contract as recommended to you today. Um, it is, as all these types of professional services contracts are, it is on a time and materials basis depending on scope amendments from the board. As you recall, in the last contract, we had something like three scope amendments changing your board's direction to the consultant. Uh, if that happens, the work product, of course, changes, although we are quite a ways along now on the Public Works Plan update, which is one of our early tasks, and I hope to be back to you in February. We're scheduling a date now for a study session on that matter. Okay. Sorry, I'm speaking so fast. But I'm sorry, are there questions at this time? I have a speaker card. I have a quick one. I'm sorry. Lynn, yes. um, when you talk about uh, the projects that are going to be uh, encumbered under this uh, request for contra uh, additional contract, I'm seeing two to three years uh, worth of projects. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, that's always variable. Things may take longer. As you mentioned, there's no guarantee on project timelines. Correct, but okay. the specific projects are laid out, and again, I should should have mentioned that a number of these are subject to reimbursement agreements with the lessees I understand. who will be bearing part of this cost. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. Lee Quaintance. Uh, yes, good morning. I'm Lee Quaintance for the Beacon Foundation. Uh, I'm not here to talk about the performance or qualifications of the Culbertson firm. That's a subject on which there is strong disagreement. What I'm here to talk about is the proposal that is before you, which I think is contrary to public policy and should not be approved. So far, the Culbertson firm has been paid uh, $466,132.51 for planning and consulting services for Channel Islands Harbor. On September 30th, you raised that by $150,000, and today you're asked to add $200,000 on top of that, bringing us to within shouting distance, certainly, of $800,000. Only five firms were sent the RFQ, which you asked to be done in order to see whether there were other possible candidate vendors for this, uh, for this contract. I'm f sorry to tell you that I don't think this was done in a proper manner. Um, the, the selected number of five uh, is really only four because one of them is the Culbertson firm itself. Uh, in addition, one of the others is a single practitioner, Nancy Lucast, who, used in the, who you used in the feral suit, obviously not qualified for an engagement of this type. Two others did not respond. And then finally that leaves D.B. Nesh, who wrote you a letter saying something you already knew, that he's engaged by Channel Islands Marina and therefore would not be able to take this project. One thing that was not disclosed to you, which is in this sheet that I asked to be passed out, which is from the Culbertson firm webpage, I took it off yesterday, is that Mr. Nash uh, is a part of, of uh, Culbertson and Associates. As it says right here, uh, the, they are very happy about a project they got because management staff recommending Dave Nash of CAA for the assignment. So when you send out this proposal to just five firms, one of which is the candidate firm that you're trying to compare to, and one of which is associated with that firm, I don't think that's a sample upon which you can rely. I'd like to remind you that in 2001, you approved a resolution regarding Harbor Department environmental service contracts, a process to be used 
in picking consultants for Harbor Projects. It lists nine firms, none of whom received this request for proposal. So I don't think this was a legitimate approach to getting a comparable uh, possible candidate for this job. But a further concern and a much greater concern is that the way this is set up, you are locking up this harbor in the hands of one consultant. This is not only the consultant, it's the only consultant. And all of your tenants are obliged to use this consultant. And this is under a time, uh, without a time frame, at least two or three years, for projects that are essentially undefined in terms of scope of work. You are placing a single vendor uh, in a lockdown on this harbor. If you want to do any project there, you must go through the Culbertson firm. That is the only vendor that is approved. That's not right. Also, there is no control over how these services are to be priced. You know what you have initially authorized to pay, but you don't know what's going to be handed off to these individual uh, tenants. Will some be charged more than others? On what rate will they be charged? This simply is taking a process that was supposed to look at alternatives and locking down the one chosen vendor. Now to be authorized for $800,000, but I'm sure based on the past history, we can all see that this is headed way above a million dollars before we get anywhere. This is not the proper way to allocate resources and opportunities. It is not the proper way uh, to spend public funds. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further cards. Would you answer or yeah, Madam address Chair, some just, of just a items? point of information. First of all, Mr. David Nish, who was mentioned by Mr. Quaintance, has been separated from the Culbertson Adams firm and independently working out of his own firm since January 1st of this year. Uh, that's relatively common knowledge. Unfortunately, it sounds like a website hasn't been updated. Uh, the second item is that the Culbertson Adams firm represents the county. The lessees pay their share of the county's expenses. It is not unusual, nor is it going to be unexpected, for them to also have their own consultants, just as Mr. Quaintance mentioned, that Mr. Nish is representing Channel Islands uh, Harbor Marina. So they are, they are just paying the share for our work. Ms. Culbertson does not represent our lessees, just for your information. Appreciate that. Other like, questions? Other yeah, questions like, here? While, while you're there, I just, just want to be clear. The, the, the county needs a consultant to help us guide ourselves through this, all these regulatory, all this regulatory process. Absolutely. And to a large extent, the lessees will be paying those consultant fees that the county will be incurring. That's correct. And the advantage of moving right now is that Ms. Culbertson has a, developed a lot of background experience and expertise with our, with our coastal plan and with our plan and, and uh, our public works plan and all of that. If we did not take this action today, would it delay our ability to allow uh, these projects to, to, would it delay our ability to move these projects forward with the Coastal Commission, et cetera? I mean, in other words, if we didn't go with this contract and we went back out for other bids, et cetera, I see. Well, uh, yes, it would, um, and we could go back out to bid. That's, but that's I, fine. That's, yeah, that's I'm not sure your result you. would be yes, any different. Fine. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're you're saying even if we went back out, we'd probably still end up with the same result. Other questions? Thank you. I don't have a question. I, I will make a comment though. Uh, when you, when you identify source of funding, so Harbor Enterprise Fund and various leases, leasee lessees. Let me ask you. Um, what kind of an accounting system do you have for charging, uh, billing? Uh, let's pick one of these, the uh, Casa Serena Hotel. Well, that's a good example because we've already had such an agreement with them for the closing on, of escrow of their prior deals. Uh, we have, similar to what the planning department in the county uses, a reimbursement agreement that they sign. They make a deposit against that agreement. When the, the, the uh, consultant, uh, whether it's an attorney, which it was in the case of Westbrook, uh, when the attorney is under contract to us, we instruct them to bill us by project on separate pages. Those bills are then paid out of the deposit account, submitted to the lessee for refreshment of the deposit, and we continue going until the project is complete. 
But let me ask, in the case of Culbertson, how, right. how is this going to be done? She will be instructed to bill us by project with each project on a separate page, total bill on the cover to the county. And then each project will be charged on a time and materials basis uh, based on what work she actually performs under our direction. Just one more question. It seems to me, um, and I don't have it in front of me, but some time ago uh, on a contract with Culbertson, she was to do the public works plan update, the total public works plan. What happened there? That was in the first contract. You're correct about that until the scope was amended by the board because of all the expanded work on the BISC. But you are correct. That was the original assignment, but that assignment was changed but by the board. But she never really, really got into that, though. No, because the assignment was changed by the board. No. We're doing it now. Madam Chair? A lot of money. I'd like to move, move the recommended action. Second. So motion and a second. Any further questions? Um, just a comment, if I might. Um, the I appreciate that going to uh, out for RFQ. I know that was a, a, one of the uh, Harbor Commission's requests, and I'm glad that we were able to do that. I do also understand that it's a limited number of people out there that do this. Um, I know that, uh, as uh, Supervisor Clinton mentioned, the scope of work that we originally intended has not uh, been able to be proceeded with. Um, I'm feeling... Uh, uh, that the process of having one consultant and everybody who has, and there's a lot out there who have to do any processing, have to go through that one, our one consultant. I understand where the county needs to do the notice of impending development. That's something I can see our planning department, who is who are really good at following, in my understanding, really good at following um, all the regulations as to how to proceed in development um, and looking at all the relevant development documents. I would like to have someone in-house on this one to do the NODs, the notice of impending developments to look at the relevant development uh, documents and then um, let let the um, applicants out there ha have their own people doing it. I feel that that will be a, a better use of county funds in terms of the fact that these projects that might be looking at three years may well go to five years. And I know um, continuing to contract with a consultant to do this, I'd rather have somebody in-house. Um, and I'm sorry I have to go, because, uh, but uh, that's why I'm talking fast. But Can we I, take I action on the item then? The We've got a motion a and a second. An objection to the motion? I oppose the motion for a number of reasons, but one is I think back, uh, and it really bothered me, when the consultant was asked to look at um, alternative uh, areas for the BISC, the consultant spent a little bit of time and a little bit of energy on that and very few pages on that, so it was not complete. Supervisor Parks, was that an affirmative vote? The motion passes 3-2. That completes the work of the board until 6.30 tonight at Camarillo City Hall. 6.30.